Whether you're coming from a boat or a stand, welcome back to the lodge with your host, Matthew Dredska. Wait, no, 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 that's not what I meant. No, no, come on, no. <laughs> Dang. Uh, and Patrick Mudge. I really don't know what to say that's funny because I'm not a very funny person. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> don't tell me they're gone. I won't have nothing left. Don't tell me I'm strong. And you got no regrets. If thinking about us, thinking about then, thinking about how I could have been, don't cross your mind. So if you do fine. Don't tell me Don't tell me Back to the Lodge is brought to you by Icy Tech USA Good evening, it's 6pm here in West Tennessee And welcome back to the Lodge In studio with me is Matt Dretzka Hey, hey, hey and behind the studio board, our engineer, Nick Condor. What's going on, brother? Guys, this is it. Our premiere episode of Back to the Lodge. That's yeah. it. Can you believe it? I mean, this has been a work in progress for months. Yeah. I mean, you want to talk about surreal. I mean, this started off as being an opportunity that we were going to actually produce our own TV show through Icy Tech that was getting picked up by another entity. Mm-hmm. Then it was supposed to be picked up by Discovery Channel. They were interested. And then COVID hit. And next thing you know, filming's on hold. So how awesome is it for 100.9 The Farm to welcome us to host the show, Back to the Lodge, where we're going to be bringing in guests. You know, Matt and I have been truly blessed to have the opportunity with Icy Tech to travel the country and meet some of the folks around the globe that we've met. And everybody from outdoor personalities to country music stars to veterans to gold star parents and these foundations have just absolutely resonated with us as far as, you know, their values. Yeah. And our value systems all align. So it was just a perfect fit to tell these stories and kind of pull back that curtain so people can see what goes on when the camera's not running. Mm-hmm. And when the TV's off, what really takes place? And some of these stories are just, they're tear jerkers. They, they hit your heart where it counts. I mean, they're just so touching. Um, and speaking of those guests, tonight we have a few guests coming on. One is going to be Tom O'Neill, mm-hmm. the father of Rob O'Neill, the Navy SEAL who killed Osama bin Laden. Wow. I mean, I... I met Tom a couple years ago, and what an amazing guy. Matt, Matt's got to talk to him a little bit. Yeah. And you want to talk about somebody who just absolutely gets up every morning and, you know, seizes the day. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. <laughs> no. no. yeah. But more, more than that, too, not, not just as a father and, and a, an aggressive, strong gentleman, you know, a man's man, mm-hmm. but he also is an avid outdoor fisherman. And fly fisherman. Yep. Wow. Uh, trout fishing up in Montana, and man, he's got some great catches. His his game room is is truly remarkable. Mm-hmm. Um, also with us, we're gonna have a couple Gold Star parents. Okay. As you know, tomorrow is the nine year anniversary of Extortion Seventeen, mm-hmm. and as some of you know, Extortion Seventeen was the greatest loss of life to military special operations with thirty one heroes on board. I think it was actually thirty. Plus the canine, yeah, is that right? I Bart, think that's Bart right. The canine, yep. wow. So it's near and dear to my heart. So to have two gold star fathers on the show, Charlie Strange, the father to Michael Strange, and Dan Robinson, father to Heath Robinson, both uh, were killed in action that day. Um, we're truly blessed. So I definitely, you know, can't speak highly enough of these gentlemen. I've known them for a while now, uh, but to to bring on the people that we know and be able to sit and tell those stories um, is probably the most humbling experience that I've had. And uh, again, from 100.9, the farm, truly blessed. So we look forward to putting together a great series of shows. 
every Wednesday night here at uh, the studio. You can listen to us locally here in West Tennessee on 100.9 The Farm WEIO, or we're live streaming globally at backtothelodge.com. And I know soon we're going to put this together on podcasts and YouTube, and and, uh, our sound engineer, Nick, who's a wizard behind the board, (laughs) true lifesaver. Yeah, that's an understatement. (laughs) Uh, It's going to help us get this out. So bear with us as it's our first episode, and we're going to crank through some of these things. But uh, we'll be back. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Back to the Lodge on 100.9 The Farm. Get him! Woo! Look at there! This moment was brought to you by Higdon Outdoors, a leader in the waterfowl industry for over 25 years. Check us out at HigdonOutdoors.com. Higdon Outdoors has been helping waterfowl hunters make the most of their time in the field for over 25 years. We are a family-owned company, and we're proud to serve duck and goose hunters just like you. We make high-quality, innovative decoys and hunting products that you can afford, helping you focus on what's really important. Check us out at HigdonOutdoors.com. Innovation. Quality. Customer service. That's Higdon Outdoors. Get real. Get Higdon. IC Tech now has tumblers and apparel. Check out ictech.com or visit the Hardware House in Huntingdon, Bennett's Hardware of McKenzie, or Rev Power Sports in Jackson to find all your IC Tech coolers and accessories. IC Tech, the classic roto molded cooler that started an entire industry. 100% veteran owned and operated. IC Tech USA. 615, we're back in studio. Back at the Lodge here in West Tennessee. As we were saying, it's our premiere episode. So before we really cut into this, it is our first, right, Nick? Yes, sir. So, I mean, this is, this is the premiere, the, uh, the, 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 the launch. There might be a hiccup or two. I've there never, just might be. I've never been live on anything. I've never gone Facebook live. I've never gone Instagram live. We're going to have to fix that. We've well, definitely uh, floated we, you in a cooler a couple times. We've apparently already <laughs> fixed it already. we got 15 minutes of me live already. I'm pretty much a pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, if we had a, ca- we're gonna have to get a camera, because you know, if anybody's seen the video on on Facebook and Instagram, we've we've put Matt in one of our long box coolers. I wish I could have been there. When we that. filmed that little ad, it was like this is not gonna work. This is not gonna work. And I'm I'm thinking to myself, well, we need to go get a towel because we're gonna put him in the lake, in a cooler. <laughs> and I'm thinking, this ain't gonna work. It was more buoyant than a John boat. Ye of little faith. <laughs> I mean, when he went to push into the water, I thought for sure. I'm like, yeah, he's getting wet. And, and I'm standing there with my cell phone, you know, hitting the record button and trying to be discreet about it so he doesn't see me. And of course, he floats. <laughs> I mean, I put almost a mile on that cooler, I bet, what? that day around the pond. What was, what was going through your head? <laughs> well, first, viewers need to understand, I don't care to be embarrassed. No, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't have that what other people have that keeps them from doing dumb, crazy things. So I'm the perfect person for this type of stuff. I'm also ridiculously athletic. So I oh, knew I could uh, balance it. You're, you're saying that because we don't have the camera right now. <laughs> <laughs> they also uh, can't smell you either. No, we just we, we knew it would make a great video. If, it was if, great. If, and honestly, even if it would have turned over, it still would have made a great video. It would have. It may have even made a better video. Right. But... For you to actually get in there with an oar, paddle out, yep. and cast, you know, I'm like, well, I guess our coolers are now like emergency lifeboats, but I'm sure the Coast Guard will not certify I'm, that. I want to take this up to the Coast Guard and see if I can get a transom rating on it. Get a hull number. And see if I can get a hull number on it. <laughs> you know, it, it would just, it, I think it'd be pretty cool if we could actually put an outboard or a troller on there and, and see if it works. Oh, it'll handle a troller. Just <laughs> we'll have I have to. no doubt. Maybe we'll do that in the wintertime when the water's colder. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Well, speaking of, you know, just amazing stuff, you know, let's talk about some of the guests that we're going to have on this show. And, you know, just for tonight, even the the lineup we have is very critical. And it's also very personal to Matt and I, uh, especially me. Mm-hmm. So, as you know, tomorrow uh, is the nine year anniversary of Operation Extortion 17. Extortion 17 was the largest loss casualty of life to the special operations community and one of my friends from the service and best man at my wedding was KIA and extortion one seven along with 
30 other guys. Well, I think it was 29 and the dog, Bart. Um, so a total of 31 souls on board. In, in tomorrow's been nine years. I mean, I just, I can't believe it's been nine years already. Um, and Matt, you know, you've, you've grown to learn a lot about extortion one seven, even more than what you knew before. I mean, obviously you knew a lot before, uh, Matt was army. I was Navy. So we have jokes all the time back and forth and it's usually inappropriate for radio, but, uh, Oh, it's always inappropriate. Always. But also I was also deployed at the time of extortion one seven. Yep. And I was a DOD contractor. Yeah. So, I mean, it was. Crazy times back then. Uh, you know, the rules of engagement changed substantially um, after 08. And, uh, you know, it's tragic as it may be. But, you know, I, I point this out all the time. You know, think about the things you're grateful for and the silver lining. And, you know, you look at the, these tragedies that happened and, and the remarkable stories that came out of it. Um, and, and one of which that's real near and dear to our hearts uh, was the Michael Strange Foundation. And the Michael Strange Foundation was the first foundation to take Gold Star parents. Now, a Gold Star parent is a parent that lost a son or daughter in combat. So to take those parents on these healing retreats where they just pack a bag, a car shows up, takes them to the airport, and off they go. And there's this grief counselor there at these resorts. And they're nice places. I mean, it's, you know, they don't want to take them to Motel 6. They're taking them to you know, Ocean City, Maryland, or Jersey Shore, you know, Washington, D.C., somewhere, somewhere nice right. where they're comfortable and, and you know, can open up a little bit. And, and these groups of strangers turn into just groups of family because they finally have that commonality and, and they have the same values. They raised you know, children that grew up and became warriors and paid the ultimate price. So to watch firsthand what these families are getting out of these grief counseling sessions are just beyond remarkable, in my opinion. Um, so lucky enough, one of our guests this evening is the founder, Michael's father, Charlie Strange. Um, so we look forward to having Charlie here in a little bit. Um, also from Extortion 1-7 was another Gold Star father, Dan Robinson. Mm -hmm. um, his son, Heath Robinson, was a uh, SEAL on Extortion 1-7 on the Chinook that went down. And, you know, another remarkable human being that we've met that is just doing amazing things to raise money for groups that are out there and um, helping veterans. He's, he's happy, helping the active veterans that are coming home that may be running into some financial difficulties with COVID going on right now because their active duty pays ending and it's really hard to find a job right now. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the things these guys are doing are just, I mean, it brings tears to my eyes. I'm not even going to lie. So, you know, we're truly blessed to have them. Um, and Dan will be coming on after Charlie later this evening. But, um, our first guest that we have coming in here standing by is Tom O'Neill. Mm -hmm. And if you've listened to YouTube or the stories, you know, the, the Navy SEAL responsible or claims responsibility for killing Osama bin Laden, Rob O'Neill, uh, SEAL senior chief, 19 years of service. Um, I met his father a few years ago, and Tom, oh, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> the guy, yeah. he's, he's just amazing. I mean, there's no, there's no better word for it. He's amazing. I mean, you can tell, you know, yeah, he's, he's Rob's dad. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can tell where Rob gets yeah. his not only charisma but his – Courage and his steadfastness. You can see where oh, where Rob 100%. gets that all from through Tom. I mean, he's physically active. He He's an avid outdoorsman, and that's one of the reasons he related first. And it was just made sense for him to be our first guest on the show. You know, Tom is an avid trout fisherman, and, and he's out in the creeks up in Montana and all over the country um, just slamming it. I mean, he's yeah, he fly fishes. He does all, all kinds of fishing, but he's an avid fly fisherman. Um, and right now he spent a lot of time with his grandson mm. and, and they're just, man, they're getting outdoors and you, you would never know there was COVID in this country right now. Like his grandson probably has no clue, no. uh, because he's outside. And when you're outside that much, I mean, obviously <laughs> up in Montana, you can really social distance, but I mean, I think also to Matt and I have been social distancing before it was cool. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. Uh, <laughs> no doubt. Intentionally. So, yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> And, you know, there was, there was times, like, even when Matt first started at Icy Tech, would come in, and he's like, man, I bet I could fit in that cooler. And that was a thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's like, okay, I wonder if I can fit in that one. I th I'm going to live in that one for a week and videotape this. And I'm looking at him like, what is wrong with you? But, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of things. I promise you there's a lot of things. But, man, what a blast. But um, when we come back from our break, we're going to have Tom here in studio you guys aren't going to want to miss this. The, the father of the SEAL, 
that killed bin Laden. When we come back, you're listening to 100.9 The Farm. This country was born to believe in something larger than itself. A belief that the citizens within it could accomplish anything. From defeating an empire to sending a man to the moon. We built cities, formed the land, and through this an original spirit was born. It has forged friendships, been celebrated, and at times been the cause of debate. We might not always agree, but there is one thing we can all agree on. Love of country and love of a fine bourbon. America Bourbon. Vet owned and made proudly in the USA. Available nationwide at most leading retailers and at AmericaBourbon.com. Welcome back to the Lodge. Our first guest today, Mr. Tom O'Neill. Tom O'Neill is the father of Robert O'Neill. Robert O'Neill, known as the Navy SEAL to shoot and kill bin Laden nine years ago, uh, back in May. I've had the pleasure of meeting Tom last couple years. We've done fundraising together for Gold Star Families. Uh, truly wonderful man, but even more important and lesser known, Tom is an avid fisherman. Tom, pleasure to have you on the show. Patrick, it's a great day. It's a wonderful Wednesday to be out on the Big Hole River with my grandson, a fly fishing guide up here in Montana, and we should be throwing some chubby Chernobyls at some rainbow trout. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, tell me this, Tom. What what got you into fishing? What what was it? You know, maybe growing up or something in your past that got you into fishing? Well, I've been sort of a fisherman all my life. I when growing up, my dad and my brothers and I used to go out kind of on the Big Hole River, the same place I'm thinking of taking you one of these days. And we would throw hardware, we would throw bait. We'd go out and have lunch, have a great time. So I I've, I've kind of been a fisherman all of my life. But it's lately that um, my grandson, who I took fishing, bait fishing also when he was young, he's 25 years old now, but when he, when he was like eight, we used to go fishing. Then all of a sudden he, he matured by himself and became a fly fisherman and eventually a fly fishing guide. And now a uh, fly fishing guide in the summer, and he's a CPA in the winter. Wow. I mean, this kid is, has got the best of both. And so... I've always been into it. It's been part of my DNA. Fishing, camping, outdoors, archery, hunting, the whole thing. It's just, it's its like I can't remember not doing it. I've always done it. What is it, what is it about it that made you fall in love with it? It's the serenity, the quiet. It's the floating down the river and all you, all you can hear is nothing, but all you can feel is a bald eagle flying over you. Half the time you don't even see them. You can just feel them when they're over you. And that's happened to me a couple times this year. And that's where we know we're fishing in the right spot because the bald eagle, he's not out there just on vacation. He's fishing too. (laughs) Exactly. So to our listeners who've never heard you on the station before uh, or followed you, you know, being the father of the Navy SEAL who killed bin Laden. uh, Now I can say with, with undue certainty, Rob is a very resilient guy. Met him, known him for years. Actually, we're pretty sure we've known each other even longer than that. We uh, we kind of came face to face many years ago during an intel briefing back in '05. Um, but longer than that is, you know, Rob's a very positive guy, uh, especially when you see him on stage. He's very resilient. But looking back in history, and and you being outdoors, uh, be, whether whether it be fishing or hiking, I see you do some hiking too. But when you found out that Rob killed Bin Laden. Did being outdoors mean anything different to you? Did it help you in any different ways? In some ways, yes, Patrick, because Rob and I have a history almost identical to that of my grandson and I, Colton, now. I mean, always doing the, uh, always fishing, always camping, outdoors doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, But part part of our DNA, ours being Rob and mine, was also basketball. It's one of those, you know, he has a few things in there about making 105 free throws in a, in a row. And he, he won the John Stockton School of Basketball camp in Spokane. This is part of Rob's history that a lot of people don't know. And even the out, and it kind of relates. The outdoors and basketball are kind of the same. It's all physical. It's all, it all involves sweating. When you're hiking or when you're playing two on two basketball, you're sweating and you're doing and, and I guess part of the DNA that we have 
as a family is that, you know, maybe we should read more. We should find a novel and read it rather than going out and writing it. That's what we're, we, we're doers rather than thinkers in some of, in some respects. That's not to say that Rob's one of the smartest guys I've ever met, but, uh, the outdoors had a whole bunch to do with our, our ability to, uh, to function later on because what it does, it becomes a exercise in almost constant failure. You, you, you go hunting, you miss the shot. You go hunting, you sprain your ankle. You go hunting and, you know, something goes wrong or it doesn't go perfect. And that's what keeps you coming back because we have a little saying that perfection is not required. In fact, perfection will not be tolerated because if, you, if you're ever the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room. Yep. And so we're always pushing limits so that we're trying to improve our, ourselves because you never really, really get there. You always are approaching it. You know, I've got a couple of, of uh, Boone and Crockett trophies on the wall that I'm staring at right here in Butte, Montana, a bighorn sheep and a, an Alaska Yukon moose. You know, and that's wonderful. It's a nice trophy that gives rise to a nice conversation about how it happened. But um, it always pushes you forward. You know, there's always something else. Interesting story, too, on that moose. I was in Alaska in early September 2001. And I remember exactly when this big moose, <laughs> the huge is the size of the great outdoors, this moose is. I took this moose on September 8th at about... 10 o'clock in the morning, we were on horseback in an area that you wouldn't believe in, in downtown Alaska. We got out on 9-11, and I, was, I came to a place, I think it was like Duffy's Roadhouse or something in the middle of nowhere, and I'm looking at a TV screen. We hadn't, we hadn't slept in three days, and I see these buildings burning, and, and I thought, oh, my God, I'm delirious. I just better find a, a, a rack and get, to, get some sleep. And, I mean, on 9-11 is when all this happened. Wow. And so, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting that I, I was hung up in Fairbanks for about 10 days. One of my first calls was with Rob, who was, I think, maybe in Italy or someplace, someplace overseas. And the only thing he said to me was, welcome to my world. Wow. You what know? what so a change. It's, it's kind of all tied together, the outdoors and his military career and, and his subsequent heroism. Well, and that's what we want to show and highlight through Back to the Lodge in, in stories like yours, Tom. You know, one of the things we want we try to point out to listeners, and this is a this is a very driven mission of Matt and mine, is is to highlight the fact that you, you hit the nail on the head. The fact that you've been outdoors your whole life prepared you for all this. And, and something about being outdoors, it, you know, it puts your life in perspective as your problems are relatively small compared to the whole world. And, and even if it's in a city or Butte, Montana, or up in Fairbanks, Alaska, you know, from one extreme to the other, being outdoors prepares you to not be dependent on a system, on any one particular. You are responsible for yourself, whether you find peace with God or peace with nature. You absolutely prepare your life for stressors. And, and I think that's what builds some of that resiliency. Would you agree with that? I agree 100%, Patrick, because... As you get outdoors into more and more of, as I would phrase it, just serenity, just quiet. I mean, we talk about social distancing. My good Lord, I was fishing three days ago with my grandson. And I guess our nearest, uh, you know, Colton and I were probably, oh, a 100 yards apart, fishing different parts of the Ruby River, of all places, in southwest Montana. The nearest person after that is Miles. I mean, so you want to talk social distancing, we got it in spades <laughs> up here. And, and that's part of the beauty of the outdoors is you have to become a little bit independent. You have to be able to handle <laughs> as we would say. Um, you know, something goes wrong. Uh, let's say you fall down, sprain an ankle, break a leg, whatever it is you do. I mean, these things happen. How are you going to survive? Can, can you start a fire some way? Can you get shelter? Can you, can you, uh, keep yourself warm. I mean, it does give rise to an independent thought. You know, it's the old frontier thesis, maybe, of how in the hell did people end up in the western part of the United States? I know New Yorkers, in some respects, think 
I've had people ask me, and I, you do have hotels out there, don't you? And things like electricity. <laughs> I mean, people kind of lose track of some of the uh, rel- relative amenities that everybody's got. Maybe that's where everybody ends up in Alaska, just to get away from everybody that isn't up there, you know? Well, I know so I know Matt and I can say with, with, with no certainty of doubt, uh, and, and yourself, we you know we've been social distancing before social distancing was cool. Uh, <laughs> and, and whether it was a matter of Matt being in the front of the boat, me in the back, or or one tree stand to another, uh, you know, social distancing was cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> before it it's became always- before it became a trend. I love it. <laughs> but uh, no, we definitely love it. So I mean, Tom, for you to, to be out fishing, you you are the most one of the most avid outdoorsmen I know. Uh, but one of the reasons why we wanted to have you on uh, for tonight. You know, this, this is the nine year anniversary of Extortion 1 7. Uh, coming up next on the show, we're also going to have Charlie Strange and Dan Robinson. I know you've met both of them. You've I known know them for years. Them. Uh, yes. But here at IC Tech, we love to support the Gold Star families. It, it's a true mission dear to us. And I know you and I talked last November. I got to get you an IC Tech cooler sent up there. We've been talking about it. <laughs> so people yeah. understand, you know, when they buy an IC Tech cooler, you know, you're not just buying another Rotomold cooler. You're buying the original. It's supporting Gold Star families. And, uh, I, I ended up having to drive yours back from Philly. So we got to get it up there to you for that, uh, for that trout fishing that you got going on. Absolutely. And, um, hey, so, yeah. One, one thing I want to mention, Patrick, and I'm, I'm not pounding my chest here and I'm not trying to get myself a halo or anything like that. <laughs> but one of the, uh, one of the outgrowths of outdoor activities just for me and for probably a lot of other people is ultra marathoning and it isn't running on a track or running in running down park street in some city it's the leadville trail 100 oh wow where the the starting point of this adventure is at ten thousand feet and you go 50 miles out 50 miles back when the gun goes off the clock starts and the first one back wins i mean it's one of those things and you're doing and this you get Oh, I've done that. Yeah. Well, then you need to thump no, your chest because they'd be thumping my chest to resuscitate me. I mean, absolutely thump your chest. <laughs> I've ran a hundred miles in the last ten years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's just an exercise in deprivation, I'll, I'll, physical, emotional, spiritual. You name it. You want you know you. The only person you don't want to kill is yourself. Well, I'd be praying the whole way. I'd be very close to God because I'd be (laughs) praying to him every step of the way. Tom, when I got out of the military and defense contracting, my chief looked right at me and he says, are you going to PT every morning? And I said, no, I'm going to have chocolate cake every morning. I meant that. (laughs) I mean, so you're telling me you're doing these ultra marathons and running down mountains from altitude to 10,000 feet. Get a, get an AED because I'm going to have a heart attack listening to this. So please, by you know, all means, one, thump your chest. If you're doing that, my that hat's off to you. About, and, and it's a person I've never met. And it, he's an ex-Navy SEAL. His name's David Goggins. And oh, I've yeah. read a little bit about him. Oh, absolutely. Holy crap. That guy's a beast. Talk and about so, a runner. I mean, he, he was... He like was him and you think, I want to be him. I want to be that guy. So now i got more work to do. You know, because we're always pushing the limits, whatever our personal limits are. You try to go a little bit beyond it. And that's that's the beauty as we reel this all the way around to the outdoors. What keeps me going down the river is this, not the rainbow, the monster rainbow fish that I caught. It's the monster rainbow rainbow that got away. Yeah. (laughs) You know, it's like when Rob was Rob and I used to play basketball incessantly, obsessively. And the best part about Rob when he made 105 free throws was making 105 free throws. <laughs> the worst part was he missed at 106. I mean, so it's always something, and maybe it's being Irish and crazy that causes this <laughs> sort of a dysfunction, but my God, so okay, we're going to do it again until we get 110. Absolutely. Or something. <laughs> but Goodness maybe that's gracious. what keeps you in the swim. That's what keeps us humble and, and keeps us, you know, you know, none of us are getting out alive, but we're going to sure make a big splash while we're here. That's amazing. Well, Tom, speaking of being humble and grateful, Rob has uh, renamed and reorged his uh, his philanthropy. As you and I discussed, yeah. it's called Nashville is Grateful, um, and that is benefiting. That event coming up in September is benefiting the U.S. Special Operations Group called Soft.org, and that is Special Operations Transition Foundation. Um, and soft.org, from what I understand, 
is, is helping special operators transition from the military world to the private sector and corporate side. Um, and he's off to a great start with that. He's been doing it with a, a different named foundation now for several years. Um, I've had the pleasure of hearing Rob talk about that, and we'd love to have him on the show one day telling us more about it. But uh, they have a benefit golf tournament coming up here in Nashville on September 15th. You'll be partnered up with uh, a celebrity or an operator from the military, and uh, it's basically a five-some. So you register your team of four, and you get paired up with a celebrity, and you're off to this golf tournament. Raises funds for a great cause. Again, that's soft, S-O-F-T, dot org. And Tom, what a pleasure. Um, being the anniversary of Extortion 1-7, uh, you know, we, we all, what, what our listeners don't know is how close we've been, uh, because yeah. of Extortion 1-7 with you, Dan Robinson, Charlie Strange, and the other families alike. Absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you had one bit of advice that you wanted to leave our listeners with, uh, what would it be? Never quit. Very simple. Very true. You know, it it all it all comes down to it. <clears throat> excuse me. As you get as you find out that you're in the wrong room and that you are the smartest person in that room, so you decide to graduate yourself to the next room and you get frustrated like hell, which you should never quit. Because if uh, if Mister X or Ms X can do it. So too can you. Whatever it is, we can we can get through it. You hang on to your buddies, and it works. It really works. And if you want a good you, you want a good lesson in humility, and you want a lesson in never quitting, get into the great outdoors because your challenges, although undefined when you get into it, are very very solvable. You can get you can get this stuff done. Well, spoken, tried, and true. The father of Rob O'Neill, the man who killed Bin Laden, Tom, avid fisherman. Friend, family, we love you, brother. And uh, if there's anything we can ever do for you, our hat's off to you. Folks, we'll be back after this break from our sponsor. We'll be back to Lodge next. When you purchase an Icy Tech cooler, not only are you getting the best and original Rotomold cooler for your barbecue, your kid's graduation party, or maybe even the boat, but your proceeds from that purchase go on to help Gold Star families receive grief counseling retreats so they can heal and get a little piece of their heart back. So they can have the same quality of life that we share. Icy Tech, USA. 6.45 p.m. We're back at the Lodge here in West Tennessee, live in studio. Myself, Patrick Mudge, my co-host... Matthew Dretzka. And on the board, Nick Condor. We are absolutely blessed to be here. What a great dude. <laughs> incredible. I in- mean, incredible. Ultra marathons? <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> well, like I said before we had him on, you can see where Rob gets it. Oh, 100%. All these guys have that little bit of insanity in them, which is needed to get to the level that Rob did. I'm, I'm just totally envious of even Tom. I mean, for him <laughs> to, to get up and do that much in the hiking and the running and Man, I'm sitting here thinking about cake. I'm thinking about cake right now. <laughs> I'm not. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about flying out there by him and going fishing. Uh, you know what? I'm down for that too. But we might take a chocolate cake and an icy tag. I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man, I'm telling you that. I'm I'm always speechless. And you know, if you've ever heard Rob talk, it, you know he he just paints the picture so well. And then when you you hear Tom and you get to know Tom, it's like, man. You guys are just killer. <laughs> I mean, all around. So, man, we're we're so grateful to have Tom in here. Um, we look forward to having him back. Honestly, like he's just one of those great guys you look up to, and it's like, wow. Well, and you can tell that the guy's got at least a million and one stories. Oh, hundred percent. So, Every outdoors. I mean, when it comes to some of these story segments of, of really getting into the outdoors, and I mean, yeah, he is somebody that we definitely should and will get back on again. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So, speaking of Western hunting and fishing, you ever been out there? Uh, I've been out there fishing. I've had plans to do hunting, but no, unfortunately I haven't. Um, I've done some rainbow fishing and stuff out west, uh, but not as much as I'd like to. No. Uh, I definitely would like to get out there. And uh, I mean, I've, I've been north, so I think the furthest north I've ever gone fishing was uh, Lake Tomogamy, and that's in northern that's Ontario. North. Yeah, that's that's that north. Was, Man, that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, 
We were, when we talked about going, oh, I think he, I told you about this. We're still going to go. We're going to go. We wanted to go this year. Well, Nick doesn't know about this. so I don't, I don't want Nick knowing about it. Oh. Well, yeah, you know what? That's kind of a good point. <laughs> I, guess, say? I guess we can bring Nick. Well, we can bring Nick. Well, you know, some of the best fish I ever had growing up. And, you know, I think back, and one of the reasons we talked about doing this show was, you know, somebody inspired you to get outdoors. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, you know, growing up fishing, I actually learned from my grandmother. I'm not ashamed to admit that. My grandmother taught me how to fish. Um, now Matt will make fun of me for that because he's seen me cast. It's awful. (laughs) I won't make fun of you. I mean, look, my grandmother was a tournament musky fisherman. She actually, I talked to them both today on the phone. They had a killer day in Northern Wisconsin today out pan fishing, just a killer day. So I, I, I grew up hunting and fishing. My, my my dad is a huge hunter, and my parents are both huge fishermen. Mm-hmm. So I grew up. My dad, one of my dad's nicknames, Walleye Dave. Like that's, I grew up fishing from Wisconsin, so a little bit different style than maybe some people are used to. But we all get those gro- those roots from somewhere. Mine was for sure my family. Oh yeah. Well, you know, Grandma taught me how to fish in the ponds. You know, the little lakes, private lakes. But when I was, I want to say, it was probably sixteen. That's when, you know, dad used to go fishing, but he went fishing on the big trips. You know, I was just a kid. I wasn't allowed to go. But when I was 16, that's when my brother and I got the invite and said, hey, you guys are going to be men. We're taking you on the the annual fishing trip, which was always Father's Day weekend. And it was a seven-day trip up to to Tamagami, northern Ontario. I've only ran into, like, two other people who have actually fished that lake here in the States. One was Babe Winkleman. Yeah. Which can't wait to have him on the show. Yeah, we talked yeah. to him about tomogamy. We did. Yeah. And he's fished it many times. And, you know, to go up there, when we used to go up there, and I, I know it's kind of reformed now. There's some new lodges and cabins you can rent. But back then, we you had an island number. And I, I, I'm really pulling out the number 675 stands out to me. It was island number 675. Mm-hmm. And they had a cabin. Like the guy owned the cabin there. Just a little log cabin. No electricity. No running water. And, of course, these were the days before cell phones. So, you know, there was – if you wanted to call home, it was a 45-minute boat ride to town and a pay phone. And I think 1-800-COLLECT was out by then. <laughs> we just gave them a free uh, advertising even though I think they're out of business. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have no idea. But, I mean, it, you had to work. If you wanted to talk to somebody, you had to fuel sure. up the boat, go to town, mm, sure. pick up the phone, and hope they were home. Because <laughs> right. if they weren't home – right. Well, you were out of luck. So. And, and not on the internet. Because if they're on there the was internet. no internet. Yeah. We didn't even have dial up back. That's right. I don't Six, think we had dial up until like you the had mid-90s. 16 years old was a long time ago. Oh, bite me. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the oldest one in the, on the show? Have to be. Yeah. Oh, man. No doubt. I mean, look at that gray and that beard. Uh. Just because I brought Metamucil with me. Uh. I mean, come on. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but, anyways, that was, that was a real defining moment for me, you know. Growing up, you know, adolescent and becoming a man was going into the outdoors and be like, look, you know, it's it's Wednesday. It's time to take a bath. Well, how do we do that? Well, you jump in the lake and you got soap on a rope, you know, right. and the rope was very important because if you let go of it, it was going to the bottom. That soap didn't float back then. So, you know, the shampoo bottle was half full. I had hair back then, believe it or not. Oh, wow. wow. I was see, again, long time ago. I had flowing locks. You just can't see them. Yeah. <laughs> But the shampoo bottle, you tied dental floss around it when you screwed the lid on. So when you jumped in, I mean, the water temperature was 50 degrees, maybe high 40s. And I said, well, that's not that cold. It's warmer, the, you know, the air temperature. When you jump in 48 degree water, your body goes into shock. And mm-hmm. I remember the old man there, uh, his name was Ed and, and Russ. Russ. Russ owned the cabin, super great guys. But Russ was probably in his mid to late 70s then. And he goes, son, you got to put a life jacket on before you jump in the lake. I said, Russ, I can, I can swim. I don't need a life jacket. Mm. Now I know why I had to wear a life jacket. Because when I hit that water, <laughs> body my body shock. locked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This this polar bear plunge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yes, 48 degree water. You learn real fast at 16. You don't know everything. Sure. And, uh, you know, the, everybody had a job. So you were there to fish, ultimately. And up there we're catching northern pike, walleye. Um, and during the day you go out bass fishing, you know, hit the docks. But... Once the sun went down, which in June that far north, it's like eleven o'clock at right. night. Mm-hmm. So you're you're hitting the lake at like ten thirty, ten forty five, and getting your your fishing lines when you're going to run your trolling lines, and you know you had to be out there before dark because you knew where you were going. Then you used the lantern to get back. 
but it gets so cold at night. You know, one person had to take turns sleeping on the couch in front of the fireplace because they had to go outside and get firewood and keep the fire going. I mean, it was as mm. primitive as it could get. No, but it's awesome. It, it was it, amazing. It's what I, I feel that it. not not just growing young boys need. I think everybody needs that at some point in their life. Oh my gosh, yes. And I've had some Canadian experiences also through through fishing, and, and me and my family went up to Eagle Lake, and uh, you know some of the best fishing. Now I didn't have this primitive campsite. I'm also, again, quite a bit younger than Patrick. <laughs> now, I don't think we had cell phones yet, but we definitely had yeah. electricity. and mm. It was a nice it was a nice cabin, but, I mean, the fishing is just... Well, and I'm going to play devil's advocate, too. So, you know, you say it's it's good for guys to grow up. I knew girls that loved Oh, that. yeah, no doubt. And, and some of them really kicked butt. I mean, when it came to go out and cut firewood, use the chainsaw and get the boats and clean the cabin, I mean, we didn't have any on that trip, <laughs> but... My grandmother would have been right out there with the guys, showing them up, and be mm. like, "Yep, now let's drink some whiskey." And she drink <laughs> under the table. So I mean, it, it's kind of like a rite of passage. I think that everybody should try at least once. And I mean, definitely, kind of a mind struggle at first if you're not used to that, because everybody's comfortable with the norm. And, and there's an old saying, you know, get comfortable being uncomfortable. And, and man, it's it's so true. If you can just embrace being uncomfortable as the norm you start to see the silver lining and everything and you're like wow this why did i worry about this you know it, how many times have we said each other matt you and i and it's like man this this is happening this something horrible happened and it's like when in our lives something happened that we just didn't come out of right oh. well and think about this just 2020 again we talked about this at the beginning of the show there's this whole pivot thing that i know not just us i've had to deal with everybody has been dealing with these pivots in, in 2020 but you know, when when the show took the when the TV show had to take the left turn, no, we weren't thrilled about it. But we found out how to make something out of those plans that we already had, mm-hmm. and how to pivot it into this. And, and that's just one small example of what we've seen in the last year. But you don't get those. You you can't do that without going through some of these times where you just got to embrace it. You got to embrace the, where you are. There's nothing you can do about what just happened. What mm-hmm. you can change is what happens after that fact. And that, and that's hugely important that you don't. You don't get from reading a book. You get it from experience. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of relates back to what we say all the time is, you know, break down or break through. It's your choice. You can vote, and that's your time to vote. But the people that choose to break through, hands down, you know, they fulfill the saying, you cannot see the stars without darkness. I mean, the folks that have been through absolute horrible situations, when they make a conscious choice, to do good with it, it's unfathomable, the results that come out of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know... The the resiliency out of those people is just incredible because the the fire that sort of can either break you down or harden you into, like, some of these next couple guests is just... It's incredible, that resiliency to push through these horrible events. I mean, just horrible events, but instead of just sitting on the couch... And living in that world that has now been created for them that they didn't do, Mm -hmm. they found a way to take their experience and and then help mold other people's lives in a positive direction. And that's incredible. And speaking of that, our next guest that we're going to have coming up, we're going to introduce him a little bit more for sure. But uh, Charlie Strange, we talked about him a little bit. A man that lost his son in combat. You're, you're going to want to hear this introduction story. Stick around. We're going to take a break. You're listening to 100.9 The Farm. We'll be introducing our next guest, Charlie Strange, when we come back. Stay tuned. Get up. Woo! Look at there. This moment was brought to you by Higdon Outdoors, a leader in the waterfowl industry for over 25 years. Check us out at HigdonOutdoors.com. Higdon Outdoors has been helping waterfowl hunters make the most of their time in the field for over 25 years. We are a family-owned company and we're proud to serve duck and goose hunters just like you. We make high-quality, innovative decoys and hunting products that you can afford, helping you focus on what's really important. Check us out at HigdonOutdoors.com. Innovation. Quality. Customer service. That's Higdon Outdoors. Get real. Get Higdon. Welcome back to the lodge. You know, I was thinking. Uh oh, what's up? I know, right? Uh oh, 
so some of the things that we're going to be doing, obviously this is our premiere show, mm-hmm. but some of the things that we're going to be doing are helping those and our listeners understand, number one, it's not just here locally. We're streaming live across the United States. Yeah. So if you've got an event and you're trying to find a platform to advertise, like let's say your fishing tournament or your fundraiser for uh, an NGO, it's really, really affordable to get it on this platform. Uh, at least right now it is. You know that could change. But uh, if you want to get out there, get some more people involved in entry. Reach out to us, and the way you can reach us is on backtothelodge.com. You can listen live. There's a live stream link right there, and of course you can listen to the radio station here in Tennessee anytime. But obviously Wednesdays from six to nine, you can listen to our show. Uh, but if you scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, you'll see a contact us link. Go ahead and plug your information in there. Um, also, if you know somebody that you think would be a fit for the show, um, we've got a lot of guests scheduled, but you never know. There could be a cancellation. So we, we do want to have a list of standby guys. Um, and obviously, you know, people that want to contribute, we want to make sure they fit our platform. So mm-hmm. wanted to get that out because we probably should have said that in the beginning. But <laughs> again, we don't know what we're doing. I say it all the time. I am closer to an idiot than I am a doctor. <laughs> So <laughs> nobody's arguing, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, speaking of people and doctors, and this I man, that was a far reach, wasn't it? Speaking <laughs> of doctors, <laughs> but people that are actually like helping people right. with mental health, uh, Charlie Strange. Oh my gosh, man! I I have known Charlie now for many years. Um, you know, knowing Mike. You know, in the military, we met. I actually met Mike in 2004 um, when we were going through A school together. I was actually leaving A school as he was kind of getting there, so there was a little bit of an overlap, and that was in Pensacola. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's where Naval Intelligence Cryptology School is. And we were actually getting ready to leave. I was, I had my orders. We were getting ready to transfer out, and I want to say this was August, August or early September. And the only reason I remember that was in 2004, there was a hurricane coming into Pensacola. And if, if you've ever been in the military, you understand that, you know, you put your leave request in. If you don't leave when it's time to leave and a hurricane comes in, your butt ain't going nowhere. Nope. <laughs> Where are you going? Nowhere. nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> so we're like, hey, we, we got to go. We got to go. And Mike and I were hanging out in the middle and some other friends. I said, man, we go. I was talking to my buddy Matt. That's my roommate at the time. I said, man, we got we to gotta go. We have to drive from Pensacola to Cleveland, Ohio for our uh, recruiter leave duty. I don't even remember what it was called. TAP, I think. or I don't remember. It was mm-hmm. recruiter RAP, Recruiter Assistance okay. Program. So we had to go to Cleveland, Ohio from Pensacola, Florida, and then drive from Cleveland, Ohio to San Diego. Jeez. That's a couple miles. Three, four, five miles? But when you're fresh out of boot camp, you're like, road trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Never again in my life yeah, no will I drive that straight through. No, thank you. And, and however it worked out, the timing, we, went, we left Cleveland, Ohio. We went down through, uh, I think it was St. Louis. And then we went west down through the north part of Texas, through Amarillo. Like, you might as well just call it nothing. Right. I mean, there was nothing past Forever. Amarillo. Right. And we stopped in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. That was en route. We stopped to freshen up. And then we hit the San Andreas Pass at night. I'd never been to California before this. Didn't know what the San Andreas Pass was. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I, I could have puked. I white-knuckled the whole drive. And if you've never been there, it's winding, sharp turns. There's, these cliffs are huge drop-offs. I'm sure there's places in the country that are much worse. But when you're driving in at night in a 2003 Ford Ranger with a high rollover rate, and guys are crossing the center line on every turn. It's like, Ooh. what was I thinking? And then you get there. It's like, well, how many days did we just drive straight through? And we don't even know what day it is. But we knew we had to check in at the command at a certain time. And then I had to drop off my truck, fly to Hawaii, and off for the rest of my career. But got to Hawaii and mm-hmm. fast forward a little bit. Now we're probably two, three months we'll fast forward. Mike shows up to Hawaii. So we pick up where we left off, show him around, introduce him to people, and you know, we stayed friends. We lived in the barracks together in Ford Island. Uh, both of us were attached to a command up in the northwestern part of Oahu. A um, little small command up there by Schofield Barracks. So anyways, we're up there. Uh, Mike and I headed off. Well, Mike, man, this kid, you know, I, I never met somebody, like a, a younger guy from a bigger city. I was, I was born in the country. Now, I was raised in the city of Cleveland, mm-hmm. but I grew up in the countryside. So I had best of both worlds. 
Okay. Which was a good balance. I loved it. I think that's fair enough to say. Yeah, it's nice abs- to have a balance. Absolutely. Yeah. Mike was straight Philly. Or how they say Philly. <laughs> well, yeah, you'll hear it. Oh, yeah. Charlie. I'm, whenever we get Charlie's. him in here. Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Charlie. And I'm probably not saying that right. But <laughs> what I learned from Mike was this kid's a tough SOB. I mean, tough. And you, he wouldn't take crap off anybody. Mm. I mean, so for a young, skinny kid from Philly, you, you just you weren't going to mess with him. I mean, and he had your back thick and thin. Uh, and, and I learned a lot about cheesesteaks because Philly's known for their <laughs> cheesesteaks. And, and mind you, my, my definition of a cheesesteak was like either the mall cafeteria right. or mm. what is that, Charlie's? Yep. Yeah. That's what I knew to be sure. a cheesesteak. Or in Ohio, we had Mr. Hero. Yeah. And I thought those were pretty good. No. Yeah, I had it's no, nothing. I yeah. had no clue. No way. We went to, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but finally, when I, after all this happened, we went to Philly and I had Tony Luke's in South Philly. Wow. <laughs> I have been so deprived my entire life. And last year I had the blessing of actually taking my fiance to have uh, a cheesesteak from Tony Luke's. And she's like, what is this? <laughs> what is this trickery? Yeah, it's like, it's a, it's a different thing. It's so good. It's a different thing. Yeah. So if you ever get up there, I mean, I can't speak for the other places cause I hadn't been up there, but Tony Luke's is all over the place. Um, and I got to meet Nikki Luke, the son and man, that place is amazing. But anyways, back in Hawaii, um, we were working some security details um, as cryptologists, which they tried to play it off as like with this, what they called ASF auxiliary security force. And the truth of the matter was we were reporting a whole different chain of command and trying to blend in with security guys that were absolutely miserable at their jobs. Uh, oh, I can tell you some of those stories. Oh my gosh. I know that. <laughs> but we had, I mean, we had to work with them. We had to report to their yep. chain of command and it was like oil and water because we just had to play by their rules, which was fine. You know, no right. big deal. It was a boring job, but they looked at us like we were way too motivated to be there. But we also knew what we were dealing with a little bit differently. Uh, and that just happens, you know, depending on your clearance level in the military. Right. But Absolutely. Anyways, long story short, so after Hawaii, Michael had got orders to DevGrew. Every, every cryptologist wanted to be on DevGrew or direct support to DevGrew. So Mike got to go. And uh, that was in 2000, end of 2007. In 2008, I was already out going into defense contracting world, which, as most people know, it's the same job. They're just going to pay you a lot more. Lot and more. you're going to travel a lot more, yeah, truthfully. Yeah. Some guys travel less, but we actually travel more. Um, worked for a couple defense contractors. But Michael went on to DevGrew, um, made it up to uh, one of the higher echelon tier one teams and Extortion 17, which was August of 2011. <clears throat> Sorry. And they were shot down over the Wardak province responding to, I believe it was a Ranger battalion that was under fire. Some of the details after that are a little convoluted and they're still trying to figure out, you know, the nitty gritty. But, Mm -hmm. um, tomorrow marks nine years, man. And you talk about people that you just, you know, when, when Michael died, they had the funeral in Philadelphia. And at the time I was working in DC as a defense contractor and I got my truck and I drove up to Philadelphia and we had the service, a beautiful service. And honestly, of all the military service funerals I've been to, it was probably the one that stood out the most. And not because I knew Michael, but because of the impact that he had from such a, a tight community and a tight city. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we need more of that. You know, a lot of people say, well, what do, what do you envision a city to feel like when you go there? It, it felt like the day after 9-11. Sure. That in t- New York that togetherness, yeah. that one. Yeah, absolutely. It was amazing. Yep. Everybody came together. Yep. And they had the service, I believe it was, man, if I got this wrong, I'd feel horrible. I believe it was St. Joseph was the name of the church. And the funeral service moved to the town square, which was the circle out in the middle. And they had the bagpipers. But the Philadelphia Police Department, uh, because of uh, his mother and family members, was very participating in the service. So there were so many police units there. There was so much interaction with the community that it was just unforgettable it was it was so remarkable how many people showed up uh, and, and that hit home for me that was the last time i had seen charlie mm-hmm. for probably six years five or six years wow and uh because i didn't know how to face him you know right you know, everybody had that little bit of survivor's guilt uh, you know, some people will say they don't believe in it. Some people say they do. Look, you know, when it, when a friend of yours that does the same job goes on and does something and doesn't make it, everybody feels a little bit of guilt. And I think 
the unspoken elephant in the room for every service member is there's a little bit of guilt that you didn't give everything and they did. Mm -hmm. And and if they didn't feel that way, their heart was never in it. And and I'll say that boldly. I think everybody has a little bit of guilt. I think you're hundred percent right. I mean, that's the the elephant in the room. And, and, you know, there's a sick part of you that goes, I wish that was me. I wish I I gave my everything. Obviously, because you don't feel like you gave 100%. And it's beating your head. Give 100%. Oh, yeah. And that's the 100%, right? But so you have that guilt. And I couldn't face Charlie. Well, Charlie kept persisting me to come out to one of their foundation benefits. And I'm like, why would I do this? Mm -hmm. You know? And one day, Charlie called me. He goes, hey. I'm not even doing his voice right. <laughs> he says, hey, show up at the airport. I got you plane tickets. You and you and your friend, your chief at the time, why don't you guys come up here to Philly? Come on, I, I got your tickets. Just show up at the airport. Mm-hmm. So poof, the next day we're in Philly. And uh, I saw him and I just broke down. Yeah. I, God, I didn't realize how bad I needed that. Mm-hmm. And, and you know he's out there helping these Gold Star families that are going through what he went through. At remarkable levels, and I'm sitting here thinking, I needed this, it, and I didn't even come up here with the intent of like I need the, the help, but I needed it. I needed it horribly. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the hardest cry of my life was getting that out, and uh, it wasn't just Michael. I had so many other people that passed away that was just pent up aggression. I think, and mm-hmm. you start to punish yourself, and and I hope that's one of the messages the show gets across is you know there's a time to stop blaming yourself. Yeah. And and there's a time to to get up, wake up, sit up, and vote how you're going to approach that day, yeah. and think about you know when you look at everything there there's anything you can look at the silver lining to, and uh, anyways we were up in Philadelphia and that's when I seen Rob O'Neill for the first time after the service, and he got up and gave a speech and I was actually tasked with doing this protection detail by the Philadelphia SWAT team when we got there they needed some help and. Next thing you know, I'm his inner concentric ring, and everybody else is out of perimeter. I'm like, how did I sign up for this? <laughs> <laughs> I just got voluntold. I feel like I'm in the Navy again. But uh, I was on Rob, and Chief was uh, assigned to Tom Duran Drago, which he'll be on the show here one day. Mm-hmm. Um, he runs the Navy SEALs Fund. And uh, I listened to Rob's speech, and I was kind of taken back. Like, wow, I don't, you know, don't really understand what all's going on, but I'm taking it in. And I was motivated a little bit to understand, like, people need to hear things that most people don't want to say. Um, And I'm not talking about, like, you know, Rob went off and killed Bin Laden. It's the resiliency of it. You know, it's a whole separate story than that. And that's a message that's spoken without the words. It's spoken with the actions. Mm -hmm. So Charlie asked me six months, almost nine months later, to come back and speak. And I was really fortunate to go through... um, some counseling and therapy myself because I was open to it. And I think once you start to accept that you don't want to be that same way anymore, you have to, you know, you vote, you make that change. And uh, one of the exercises I had learned at the time was every night before bed, you write down three things you're grateful for. And I started doing that. And I was promised that after 30 days, you'll start to see a change. Well, I did it for 90 days. Mm -hmm. And honestly, after 10 days, I felt an immense change. Now, it seemed like a simple, ordained task, right? Mundane as heck. Just go to bed, write down three things. Mm-hmm. How, you know, it's not hard. It takes a few seconds. Right. And what I was doing was texting myself the three things I was grateful for each night. But what I didn't realize what was happening was I was conditioning my brain subconsciously to focus on the positives. So you start thinking about, you know, the first day you wrote down, you're like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that my coffee was hot. I'm grateful the dog didn't take a dump in the bedroom. <laughs> but... But by after like 30 days, you were grateful for some not so great things. You know, you were, you were grateful, uh, you know, for things that your, your family did for you when you were younger. And you're really starting to reflect. You do, do more inner reflection. Sure. And then it becomes natural. And I wasn't understanding why that was working, but it was brain repetition. And your subconscious brain is so powerful that we don't realize it. And what was pointed out to me is like, do you remember when you had your first kid? Matt, I know you're your yeah, father too. Absolutely. When your wife was pregnant, Ooh. you noticed everybody was pregnant. It's yeah. like every, everywhere you look, somebody was pregnant. That's because pregnancy was subconsciously on your mind. Mm-hmm. When you go on, okay, if you don't have kids, if you went out and bought a new car, and you, let's say you buy the new whatever pickup truck, you know, they don't sponsor us, so we're not saying their name. <laughs> <laughs> but you go but and you buy you that new pickup truck. <laughs> then all of a sudden you notice how many people have that new right. pickup truck. I've done that. You do. And, and it's because subconsciously you're thinking about your new truck. 
you're not consciously thinking about it, right. but now you're starting to notice it. So when you subconsciously reprogram your brain to focus on positives, you naturally start picking up positives mm-hmm. and your life changes immensely. Sure. And what was it? Maybe a year ago I went up to speak. No, it's two years now. I went to go speak at one of the foundation dinners and I've been doing this exercise now for a long period of time. And at the end of the speech, I looked at Charlie and his wife and I said, I'm grateful for the loss of Michael. And the room just got silent. And I said, I'm grateful because had that not happened, you wouldn't have saved all the lives in this room, all the marriages that were saved, Mm -hmm. all the kids that were suicidal, the brothers, the sisters, the siblings, all of them got grief counseling. And none of that, none of that would have happened without Charlie. Right. Yeah. So there's a silver lining. And I tell people vote every day. You vote so many times throughout the day. Pick the positives because life's too short. And this country needs it more now than ever before. Absolutely. Is is outlets to look for the positives. So we want to get people outdoors. But uh, I think we're going to take a break. Yeah. And when we come back, Charlie Strange. Stay tuned, guys. This country was born to believe in something larger than itself. A belief that the citizens within it could accomplish anything. From defeating an empire to sending a man to the moon, we built cities, formed the land, and through this an original spirit was born that has forged friendships, been celebrated, and at times been the cause of debate. We might not always agree, but there is one thing we can all agree on, love of country and love of a fine bourbon. America Bourbon, vet owned and made proudly in the USA, available nationwide at most leading retailers and at americabourbon.com. IC Tech now has tumblers and apparel. Check out ictech.com or visit the Hardware House in Huntingdon, Bennett's Hardware of McKenzie, or Rev Power Sports in Jackson to find all your IC Tech coolers and accessories. IC Tech, the classic roto molded cooler that started an entire industry. 100% veteran owned and operated. IC Tech USA. Welcome back to the Lodge. We're here live with Charlie Strange. Charlie is the gold star father of Michael Strange. Michael Strange was a Navy cryptologist in Extortion 17 who was KIA nine years ago this week. Charlie, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Patrick. So, folks, what we want people to understand with this show, and like we talked about in the introduction, Back to the Lodge is framed around the value system of the outdoors and how that correlates with veteran community, outdoors personalities, and country music. And knowing Charlie over the years, Charlie has started a foundation called the Michael Strange Foundation. Charlie, tell us a little bit about that. Well, after the funeral, August 6, 2011, and there was a lot of people there. But two weeks later, everybody goes back to work. And you lost your son. You're, you're standing there by yourself looking out the window saying, people are going to work and my son died. And uh, I started another Gold Star. I ran into another Gold Star dad, Grant Smith. His son was Tristan Smith, killed in Iraq. And uh, I was talking to him, and I felt better. We were going through the same thing. We were both angry, sad. I said, we should bring more Gold Star families in together and meet for a weekend and talk and share our experience, strength, and hope. And uh, how do you get through the birthday? What do you do on the holidays? And... uh, that's how we started the Michael Strange Foundation. Uh, we pay for the air, airplane tickets, the hotel, the food, since the parent, Gold Star parents have paid for the ultimate price for, for our freedoms. Uh, we have fundraisers and uh, speakers with, you know, you, Patrick, Rob O'Neill, Drago, Tim Brown, different people like that. And uh, we, you know, give baskets and all the 100% of the money goes to back into the Helping Gold Star families. Uh, we've done nine weekends. Over 350 Gold Star parents have come through the weekend, and it helps. It helps meet the other parents, and 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 here you get by how you get through each day. And uh, the Michael Strange Foundation dot org, Michael Strange Facebook. Uh, we got PayPal. We got some T shirts. Uh, we could use support. Look us up, please. Absolutely. And we want to get listeners that information here in a little bit. 
Uh, but Charlie, some of the things I want to touch on and, and why this is so important, not just because it's the anniversary week, but also, you know, as, as you know, and, and some of our guests know, uh, Michael and I served together back in Hawaii about 15 years ago. And, um, you know, the, the resiliency that I see out of all this, and I've, you and I have had this conversation before, but never on the air, is, you know, when I stand back, you know, as the CEO of IC Tech, and we want to help in any way we can, the, the thing that stands out to me the most is here's a gold star father himself who's hurting more than myself or anyone else. And look at what you've done. Looking back at all these families that you've helped over the years, how does that feel? Well, it's all God working through us, me and my wife, and uh, and I, I really truly believe uh, Michael the Archangel and and all the you know the, the soldiers that uh, lost their lives that help us, inspired us, and uh, you know to reach out just like you know the veterans do to reach out to, to save America to help America and uh, I really believe that it, it 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 helps me like yesterday I was talking to a gold star mom she lost her son you know uh, Thursday too will be nine years and she said I just started crying out of nowhere and uh, I was just crying looking out the window for no reason I mean I know the reason you know I miss yeah. my son I love my son and uh it just comes, and uh, you know, and you wash your face, and uh, wash your face again, and uh, you try to make it out the door, and because uh, I hear, uh, you know, with the weekends, you hear the parents talking about that grim reaper, where you stay in your room for two days, and everybody goes through it. Everybody goes through it, you know. Well, let me and let it's me good ask to hear you this. the other parents how they get around and how they try to what they do to keep moving. Certainly. Well, let me let me ask you this, and and one of the things we highlight all the time, and you know, Matt and I, we we found you know, fishing and hunting for us has been very therapeutic, uh, both of us being veterans and defense contractors. But what outdoor activity would you say has helped you a lot, and why is that? Well, actually, getting outdoors, I have a mountain bicycle, uh, a trek, uh, been riding that like every other day. I just got to stop, uh, stopping at the bakery and eating the donuts. But, uh, <laughs> no, really doing that, that's been really, uh, helpful. And, uh, and fishing, and fishing. We have the Jersey Shore not too far away. A couple of my buddies stop and grab me once in a while. We sit on the beach and. Well, let, let's get fishing, back, let's get but, back to the uh, bicycle thing. What, when you go out riding and you're riding your track, what is it about riding that bike? that brings you peace i guess the you know the the air the trees you know you, you can feel the presence more closer with the lord with michael i think about michael a lot too like you know going on the the fifth or sixth mile when my old is getting tired i'm like all right michael wouldn't quit you gotta keep going you know what i mean and uh you know, uh, the things I did with, with Michael, and we did a lot of running together when he was younger. We ran the Rocky Steps, of course, here in Philadelphia, uh, over the park and around the corner, and uh, it's some kind of peace. Some kind of peace comes in. It helps. It helps with the, you know, outdoors. And I think that's one of the most overlooked things, and you, you just mentioned that. You're in Philadelphia. And and you're, I mean, you spend a lot of your time in the city, inner city of Philadelphia, and a lot of folks find it as an excuse that if they live in a city, they can't get outdoors. There's nothing to do, but but you just proved that, and, and you said getting on that bike brings you to this energy level where whether you feel closer to God or or the energy of being outside has such a therapeutic effect on us, uh, and you can still do that in Philadelphia whether you're running the rocky stairs or riding a bicycle. That that energy you you receive from just getting outside, absolutely. And 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 you're living proof, Charlie. I mean, the things you have done to create a foundation to help more gold star parents. And again, for those listening, if you've never heard of a gold star parent before, that's a parent that lost a son or daughter in combat. And, and when you see these gold star parents that we're going to have today on the show, uh, what they've done to make a difference for other gold star parents and for the veteran community and their local communities, 
It's truly, truly remarkable. So, Charlie, I do want to ask you a couple more questions, uh, if that's okay. And and one of them would be, you know, today, what is, what is your biggest stressor today that, that is playing a toll on your life and maybe how the outdoors has helped manage that? Uh, the biggest stressor is uh, a lot of questions about how my son died. Um, that's what I was just talking to Rob about and some other things and and a few other veterans. But, uh, you know, that, that bothers me that what happened that day, like uh, Michael jumped out of the helicopter. He was alive for 15 minutes. Uh, you know, I think about that. I mean, like, you know, my son wasn't, they told me my son was burned to death. My son wasn't burned at all. I got pictures from Dover. I mean, that angers me. I get sad. Uh, I mean, I understand, you know, it was war. And, he, and, and you know, uh, he loved what he did. And uh, just that day, when 30 men died, Patrick, 30 men died, you know, in a Chinook helicopter in the Tanzine Valley, a hot spot in Afghanistan. You know, there was Taliban under the trees. There was Taliban on top of the roofs. Uh, I got the pages, you know what I mean? Like, who made that call? Uh, why'd they make that call? I got rangers that were five miles away that said, you know, we didn't need we didn't need them guys in the Chinook. Why'd they send them? Got Joni Marquez, who was in the C-130 above. She's seen everything. She asked eight times to open up fire. Because of the rules of engagement, she couldn't open up fire. I talked to Joni Marquez, you know, her nightmares. That poor girl, she was ready to pull the pin. You know, like that stresses me out. I get nuts, Pat, and and I I jump on that bicycle and I step over to the park and start riding and uh, or swimming. Swimming really helps with with, with a lot. A lot of, you know, I go to the ocean down here in Atlantic City and and, and New Jersey shores and something with that outside and bring a pole or just jump in the water. Uh, I think the waves, you know, sort of, you know, helps it. And the park and the air, and but that that's my stressful thing, especially with you know Thursday will be nine years. That Grim Reaper ain't no joke, man. Uh, it just comes with, with grief. There's five stages: denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. But with any other, when you bury a child, you're not supposed to bury your children. This just comes in a circle. It just comes. The anger will come. The sadness will come. The bargain will still... I'll still talk to God like, yo, take me, bring Michael back. I'll still look at the front door, look at my phone. Like, is he gone? Is it still real? And it's been nine years, bro. You know what I mean? And I'm not the only one. That's why the weekends with these parents, Bob Huff, he lost his daughter. She was the first girl killed in Iraq, Samantha Huff. I talked to Bob. He's like, yeah, same thing, Charlie. Or he'll tell me. I'll be like... Bob, I was just thinking, this way I don't feel, you know, everybody goes through it. You know, so that's that's what's so huge with this foundation, reaching out to others and helping others and, and learning, you know, sharing their experience, how you get through and and what to do. But, you know, the great outdoors is, is so healing. You, you hit it on the button there, Patrick. Well, my hat will always be off to you, Charlie. Um, on a personal level and a professional level. And, you know, here at IC Tech, we, we couldn't be more proud to support such a great organization that helps Gold Star parents at the level you're helping them with. And to get them out to these resorts and retreats with grief counseling um, and with everything going on in today's world and economy, funding is extremely important. And while we continue to support you at IC Tech, Charlie, how can people donate? How can they reach you at the Michael Strange Foundation? MichaelStrangeFoundation.org. We have PayPal. We got t-shirts. Uh, but PayPal, you know, is that that be uh, the best way? And, and also, we have a PO box six zero three eight Philly, PA one nine one one four. At PO box six zero three eight Philly, PA one nine one 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 four. One nine one one four, but the PayPal or just hit me up on Messenger. Give me a call, and you know what I mean. Uh, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to bring it up because it's close. No, no, we love talking about our sons, Patrick. 
And, and that's we why love, I want people we to don't understand ever that. want our sons and daughters to be forgotten. That's what it is. Everybody else goes to the mall. The veterans go to war. You know what I mean? Like, and all this bull going on with these riots. Yeah. I, well, over eight thousand Iraq, Afghanistan, Africa, and Pakistan plus the, uh, you, you know the contractors. It's over eight thousand have been killed in the Middle East. Well, and yeah. we also want to point out too, people can reach you on Facebook. Uh, Michael Strange Foundation on Facebook. Uh, they can reach you there, michaelstrangefoundation.org. Um, they can buy some of the merchandise that you guys have. And you got some great T-shirts. I want to stress that to our listeners. There's some great T-shirts on there. If you want to buy a T-shirt, those proceeds go to the Michael Strange Foundation. Or if you just want to make a donation, um, as IC Tech will continue to do that every quarter, as we absolutely love you, Charlie, everything you do. Um, and we can't thank you enough for what you're doing. Now, that being hey, I, said, what would be your parting note on advice you could give someone who might be sitting at home listening to this right now, and they're in their funk, they're a little dark, and they need to find some relief in the outdoors, what would you say to them? I, I would say what works for me, I, I get a shower, I talk to God, I talk to my son, I cry turn the shower boom, and I get on that bicycle or I get in the car and I head down to Jersey sewer to, to jump in some oceans or and throw the fishing rod in there. Cause that, there's healing, there's healing in, in nature and there's healing. And once you get them legs going and, uh, and you get, and you got to go to the Lord, you know, cause he didn't walk through the valleys of the shadow of death by himself. You know what I mean? Jesus took him up to heaven because anyone that lays down their life for another is got direct into the big, big heaven, big sky. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so you, you got, and they love what they do. We'll see them again. There's a fine line from here and the other side, you know, and, and I truly believe that with all my heart that uh, I'll see Michael again on the other side. And uh, But it hurts. It still hurts. Even though you hear it and you say it and you, and you believe it, you are like you still feel like you. St I still scream, Pat. You know what I mean? Like, no, man, this is wrong. My son was twenty five years old. Are you kidding me? Who? Are you kidding me? Who put him in a Chinook school bus? And, and the anger comes. The Taliban was bragging about killing my son on the internet a half hour after they killed him. You know what I mean? We killed Seal Team Six. How did you know who was in the helicopter? There's, there's you know, so many still unanswered questions, and you know, all I know is. Uh, helping others and icy tech. I can't thank icy tech enough, man. You guys, like, you help pay for the hotel, the plane tickets for the parents. Um, you guys always been there for us. As soon as this COVID stuff gets over, we we had forty gold star parents coming in April twenty fourth, but we had to cancel. Yeah, you know, forty. It was going to be a great weekend. They were staying for three nights. They didn't have to worry about anything. They didn't have to worry about the plane tickets, anybody picking them up, the hotel, the food, because they already paid you all the price. Just bring a picture of your son or daughter. Well, we will and, be there for you, about them, Charlie. And, you know, to our listeners, if, you know, Charlie Strange, if you can do it, anybody can do it. And and you've Amen, proven brother. that that you can get outdoors and feel much better about yourself and achieve great things. We say it all the time. You can't see the stars without darkness. And and those that have been uh, at bottom tend to do great things afterwards. Charlie, I can't thank you enough again. Uh, also, you can find it on our Facebook page, uh, Back to the Lodge. We will have a fundraiser link set up for the Michael Strange Foundation. You can donate there. Um, and, and that'll go straight to the Michael Strange Foundation. And, of course, IC Tech looks forward to continuing uh, its support for the foundation. Charlie, we absolutely love you. It has been a pleasure. Uh, it's been folks, a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Folks, we're going to take a break with a message from this sponsor. We'll be back to Lodge in a minute. Get him. This moment was brought to you by Higdon Outdoors, a leader in the waterfowl industry for over 25 years. Check us out at HigdonOutdoors.com. Higdon Outdoors has been helping waterfowl hunters make the most of their time in the field for over 25 years. We are a family-owned company, and we're proud to serve duck and goose hunters just like you. We make high-quality, innovative decoys and hunting products that you can afford. 
helping you focus on what's really important. Check us out at HigdonOutdoors.com. Innovation. Quality. Customer service. That's Higdon Outdoors. Get real. Get Higdon. You're listening to 100.9 The Farm. We're back to the lodge with your host, Patrick Mudge. Matthew Dretzka. And Nick Condor. And we are truly blessed to be here. And man, just to have Charlie on the radio. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean. Dude's incredible. Uh, unbelievable. And what they are doing. I mean, I the, the hard part with radio, and, and a lot of people already know this, and it's one of the reasons why radio struggles. I can't see. And it's our responsibility to paint that picture. But when you see... You know, and you're sitting in a room, usually at like a convention center at a hotel, and you're seeing the families, these gold star parents come together, and they're having those breakdown, breakthrough moments. And, Mm -hmm. you know, one of the exercises they do that really stood out to me was they bring a picture of their son or daughter and place it in a chair across from them. And they update them, you know, tell them what's going on, and they miss them. And the, the emotion that you see from those families during that exercise, um, you know, any, any normal human being, it just hits you to your core. Uh, you know, whether you agree with the, the, the conflicts of the wars or not is irrelevant, but the pain is real. And, you know, those parents, whether, you know, they don't have a choice your your son or daughter is going to go in the military, whether they want to or not, you know, mom and dad will try to influence or sway you one way or the other. But ultimately, you know, I didn't even join until I was in my Mm twenties. So, you know, and that was because of nine 11, I already finished most of my college in aviation so by then there was really nothing to do. It's not like it was, you know, it's like right now you can't get a job as an airline pilot right now. So if you got student debt, you're trying to figure your life out. You know, the military was always an option, and it was lucrative. So, you know, it, it, the the children make a choice, and Charlie has made a choice, and his choice is to help these families. And I mean, just I wish I could paint the picture well enough for listeners to understand like how deep this goes. Um, and it's it's just raw. You can't you can't. Uh, you can't paint that. I mean, it's. I'm sure somebody could, but it, to see it with your own eyes is, is so powerful. Just, just to give these families a chance to not only get the therapy they need, but they, they get to spend this entire weekend at a nice place where they're not worried about how much that event costs. Because this isn't costing them. Therapy is expensive. Right. But to them, they get to, like you said, from the ride to the airport – to mm-hmm. the to the air to the airfare to, yeah. to everything is covered and to take that burden off of these families that have already given so much is huge absolutely it's it's huge so no it's truly an honor to have charlie on and, and i'm sure we're going to have him on again at some point um you know what they're doing is remarkable and maybe we can get some more stories from the gold star families because we do have several mm-hmm. and even coming up in the next hour uh another gold star father dan robinson um uh, you know, his son Heath was on Extortion One Seven with uh, Navy SEAL Team Six. So, I mean, when you when you hear their stories and what they're out there doing, it, it's uplifting. I, and to me, it's motivating. I want to do more. You know, I always feel like I'm. I have to do something. And, and I know Matt gets in in my fiance. You know, love her to death. But you know, we do so much. It, 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 as far as I can, as much as I can do. You know, in the hours in the day that I know you guys have gotten frustrated with me because it's like. Oh my gosh, we're doing something else again. We're doing something else again. We're doing something. Yep, we're going to go do this. <laughs> but I always feel like I'm not doing enough because you see guys like Charlie and Dan out there doing the things they're doing. And, and I, I just, you know, it's not a competition, but man, I aspire to be like them and, and help as many people as we can. But the, the philanthropy side of IC Tech has sort of been what's not kept me going but it's definitely put some gas in this tank um we'll get into this in, in other episodes but the the work that i do with with a specific nonprofit here in west tennessee um i mean it, it's the the philanthropy side of giving back to these communities that built us mm-hmm. that uh you know it's sort of given not just me but a whole lot of people this second breath mm-hmm. uh, of a uh, second calling if you will which we all try to fill that void coming out of the super structured military mm-hmm. but uh but no, I mean, when, when you hear stories like Charlie's and what he's done and Dan, you'll hear, you know, I'm, I'm sure he'll talk quite a bit about what he's doing. I mean, it just, it gives you, it gives you that fire to want to keep doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and no, and I mean, it's the, some of the missions that we've, that we've been doing here with IC Tech, it, it's, it has what's been keeping sort of my gas tank full. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's not just the bottom line sales at IC Tech, and I love that. Yeah. Well, and not just you. I mean, we've we've got a team that people don't get to see, you know, behind our curtain too. And you know, our warehouse manager will. You know, the guy is probably one of the hardest workers I've ever met. Yeah. And dedicated, tough, honest, loyal, tough. Yeah. I mean, when we did that fundraiser um, for Fourth of July weekend. And we had the outdoor venue concert where people could social distance and watch uh, Drake White perform live. I mean, we had over 2,000 people there, plus people that were doing the social distancing thing from their car. Uh, you know, Will, he, he put in so many hours. And you didn't even have to ask. He just, his heart is in the right place. And, you know, one of the things that we're truly blessed is, and in, in, I'm not blowing sunshine up here, rear here, Matt, but, <laughs> you know, having a great crew and, and guys that share the same values and, and the same drive and the same passion, it's not really work. It, it doesn't yeah, feel not. like work anymore, and it, and it hasn't since we started this. And you know, my business partners and I, um, you know, there's Walter Schneider. Um, Walter's the executive vice president, and we have uh, Jack Schoenberger is the chief operating officer. Both of them are also veterans. Uh, both of them were actually officers. I was the only enlisted guy. But so you worked. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's what they call it, at least. <laughs> but, um, you know, having the heart in the right place, we had to make a choice. You know, we didn't own IC Tech till last year. Uh, I came in consulting and then I became the CEO a couple of years ago. And then April of last year is when we bought the company. And when we bought it out, you know, we said we, we kind of want to operate it like a nonprofit. But filing it as a 501c3 and a nonprofit it's harder to do more of the sales and the retail side because right. um, there's more legal loopholes. So it was easier to run it as a for-profit, but run it like a nonprofit and not take big salaries. And, and actually, I don't think anybody in this company makes under, I'm sorry, over 30 a year. I mean, it's right. in, in because people's heart in the right place. And, you know, for everybody to have a, a good life and be able to do things we're doing and the experiences that we're getting out of this. Sure. Um, you can't put a price on some no, of those things. Absolutely. I mean, so to run it like a nonprofit, you know, people understand that when you buy that cooler, you know, it's not a, it's not necessarily a lifestyle brand, which a lot of brands want to be a lifestyle brand, mm-hmm. you know, and in essence we are because we're more, I want to call it the value brand, but not value as in like Correct. Christ value. <laughs> It's values, and we, we share the same family values, the same give back values, right, the same right. integrity values. And uh, I think that's where our clients relate because they know that the quality is there. We have, I mean, the reviews we get back, we don't spend millions of dollars in marketing. We don't have millions of dollars to spend in marketing. If we had millions of dollars, we'd be helping more families. And, and I think at the end of the day, that's what I'd be doing. So actually, I won't even say I think. I know that's what we'd be doing. Yeah. But, um, you know, to run it that way and, and keep it as genuine as can be. You know, the, when you see a celebrity endorsement of our product, we didn't pay them. None of them. You know, when you see our products on uh, Wicked Tuna, nope. you know, National Geographic or the shows on Discovery Channel, yep. we don't pay them. In fact, they bought the product from us. Um, so if you see them raving on social media, that's them. You know, we're, we're grateful for it. Don't get me wrong. But we didn't compensate them. We didn't pay them to say that. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think keeping it genuine, you know, is the future of commerce. And people are starting to realize, like, hey, when you're endorsing something, you're endorsing it because you really believe in it, and they can tell when you're not genuine. And, you know, it resonates. I look it up, too. I mean, I've, I've gotten the habit in the last couple of years when I'm looking at a new product, like a brand that I don't know. I actually look to see who owns the company. You know, with LinkedIn and, and some of the mm. programs we have today, you know, I want to know more about the people behind the product, not just the product, because it's so easy to just buy something, and it turns to junk and you're, you're never going to get customer service. You see they don't answer the customer service. Like when somebody calls us, Matt, Matt's phone rings all the time. My phone rings all the time. Jack's phone rings all the time. Will's phone rings all the time. You, When you call, if you're getting voicemail, it's because we're talking to a client. But you're not going to talk to a robot. You're not going to talk right. to a recording. You're always right. going to get one of us. And we're going to keep it that way as humanly long as possible because it's that human touch. Absolutely. It, it means you know yeah. we do care, and we do care. So... You know, having that genuineness comes from the inspiration we get from Charlie. Guys like Charlie, guys like Tom, guys like Rob, guys like Dan Robinson. Yeah. You know, they're they're almost like separate fathers teaching you how to be a man and how to handle your business and your company and, and respect other people. So, but uh, speaking of Dan, coming up in the next hour, we're going to have Dan Robinson uh, live here on the farm. 
and he's going to be talking about some of the things he has going on. But we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to introduce Dan, and we're going to have a couple, we'll call them special announcements. Does that sound about yeah. right? Yeah. Sp- special. Special. You're not going to want to miss this. Chance to probably win something. And don't forget, if you want to win that cooler that we're giving away tonight, we're going to give it away at the last uh, few minutes of the show, you need to like and share our Facebook page, Back to the Lodge. So you can go on to Facebook, Back to the Lodge, like and share it, the page and the post, and you'll be entered to win an Icy Tech 25 quart cooler. So we'll be back in a few minutes. You're listening to 100.9 The Farm. When you purchase an Icy Tech cooler, not only are you getting the best and original Roto Mold cooler for your barbecue, your kid's graduation party, or maybe even the boat, but your proceeds from that purchase go on to help Gold Star families receive grief counseling retreats so they can heal and get a little piece of their heart back. So they can have the same quality of life that we share. Icy Tech USA. Don't tell me they're gone. I won't have nothing left. Don't tell me you're strong. And you got no regrets. You used to say you'd never leave. Now all I have are the memories. Some say I waste my time living in the past. But when it's all you got, you gotta make it last So don't tell me they're gone I won't have nothing left Don't tell me I'm strong And you got no regrets If thinking about us, thinking about then Thinking about how I could have been Don't cross your mind So if you're doing fine Don't tell me Wouldn't meant to be How many more fish There are in the sea Cause I'm hooked on you And that ain't never gonna change So I'll sit here reeling in The yesterdays, the yesterdays Don't tell me they're gone I won't have nothing left Don't tell me you're strong you got no regrets If thinking about us, thinking about then Thinking about how it could have been Don't cross your mind So if you're doing fine Don't tell me Don't tell me they're gone Don't tell me you're strong in the final hour and back to the lodge so let's recap a little bit we've had i mean we've we've talked about so much stuff already yeah, a lot. <laughs> this really does go smoother than i thought uh, you know we've had tom o'neill on tom tom was just absolutely remarkable uh and charlie charlie phenomenal and you know we can't express enough you know how grateful we are to be here on 100.9 the farm uh to start this show and being streamed nationally plus syndication coming up it's it, it is surreal and kind of like drake says living the dream i mean to be up here and be able to uh help people tell these stories and reach out to so many people is is truly a blessing so always know we're very grateful for this opportunity and uh i don't think that ever changed 
one of the guys behind the scene, you you, you do hear Matt. Matt Matt is kind of my right hand man right now, and he's he's been so active with what we do. Uh, but the guy behind the board that you don't know about, Nick Condor. Nick, say hi to everybody. What's going on? So, man? Nick does the morning shows here, and uh, you know he's a singer songwriter. A lot of people don't know that, and we listen to one of your songs a little bit ago. Yeah, yeah. Don't you, tell me. You want to tell people a little bit about? Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, I wrote it uh, a couple of years back. Um, it was a time where uh, I was on summer break from college, mm-hmm. and uh, I was working here at the time, part time, and uh, some people from Nashville come up and they were wanting to do a little in studio uh, interview. Mm-hmm. And uh, I engineered that and uh, just got to talking with them and uh, sharing some stories, sharing some ideas, and just collaborating with them. And uh, one thing led to another, and it kind of landed me a little deal in Nashville for a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, which uh, led to recording the song "Don't Tell Me," and uh, it, dude, it, it it was a completely new experience to me because uh, I used to sing gospel at, at Bethel, mm-hmm. and and so you know I, I I always sang country music behind it, you know, sure, um, but it was new, it was completely new, sure, and well, we liked it, and uh, and that's obviously that. why I told you, you know, we got to have it in the show. Um, but again, it, it it testifies to the tribute that you know when you're bringing the values together of people that are either veterans, outdoorsmen, uh, country music, music in general. Mm-hmm. But you mentioned gospel and gospel going to country. There was a you know we were on a flight. We were actually in Vegas last week, and on the flight back, um, we stopped in Houston. And in Houston, from Houston to Nashville, there was a mm-hmm. uh, you know the movies that you can get on the free app, and one of them was this music documentary. And for the life of me, I had the name remembered. Now I can't remember what it was, but it it was a uh, it was narrated by Morgan Freeman, mm. and it talked about the history of music, and it talked about how country was born with gospel in the roots and cultures that blended together, mm-hmm. uh, which migrated actually from Nashville to Memphis, where Memphis was more of a bluesy, uh, jazzy or music, which mm-hmm. migrated the blend from Nashville. And New Orleans. And when they blended together, it's when Elvis came out mm. that he created that newer sound. Nice. And it was received well by many people. Um, so it's amazing how much overlap blend there is between blues, gospel, country, and, and even some jazz music if you listen close enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was one of the reasons we really resonated, I think, really well with Drake White was because his new sound is that bluesier country. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't really call it country. I mean, it's country, but it's not country. Right. It's it's his sound. You know, yeah. you just can't put your finger on it. Right. And uh, it, I think it resonates with a lot of people. You know, living the dream, mix it with whiskey. I Absolutely. mean, they're great songs. And you've got, we won't really, we won't say the names, but you've got some new songs coming up that oh, you're yeah. getting ready to cut. And we look forward to having those on the show too. Yeah. Um, and I think they're a perfect fit for 100.9 The Farm and what we stand for at Back to the Lodge. So definitely thank you, Nick, for being on our show. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Being yep. the engineer behind the scenes, because a lot of people don't get to hear you. You'll hear that that deep rock, if you, you know, yeah. I'm Nick. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but when he comes in, you know, man, he he's our lifesaver behind the scenes, and, you know, we want to make sure credit is given where credit's due. So well, I appreciate that. We're, we're grateful to have you on the show. Well, I'll tell you what, sitting here watching him hitting these buttons and these switches and these five different computer screens oh my gosh, yeah. i'll be honest i'm glad that i've just I mean, got a microphone in front of me because that's about where my talent ends <laughs> <laughs> so i'm glad nick's here for that well i'll tell you what i'm a pilot and there's a lot of buttons and switches and cockpits <laughs> or we call them flight decks now but even then is nothing compared to what he's doing. i mean he's got one two three probably four monitors i know at least three four monitors i don't know how many computers then you got the soundboard you got one two three keyboards yeah, and then yeah. another little keyboard. I mean, so yeah, he he's he's the sound engineer um, saint in this room. <laughs> so if it wasn't for Nick, there wouldn't be back to the lodge. So we we definitely want to make sure people know you, and uh, they're going to get to know you more yeah. for sure. I appreciate. It. I got you covered. So and of course, Nick runs the morning show, the morning drive with Nick on one hundred point nine, the Farm FM yep. Yep. here in Carroll County. So I said we we're going to do something special. Mm. What was that? I got excited. <laughs> it's my excited voice. Mm. Uh, Are you a marine? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I like. I don't like my crayons. <laughs> so, and if you're a marine, feel free to 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 chime in on Facebook and uh, 
you know, make some Navy and Army jokes. We're, <laughs> we're okay with that. We got thick skin. <laughs> so we got Dan Robinson coming up, and we have the cooler drying coming up. So we're going to give away that uh, that Icy Tech 25. We've got the green and yellow cooler. Mm-hmm. And it's going to say, back to the lodge on the lid. Sure we is. We just found that out today. Ooh, yep, sure is. So yeah. it's going to have the back to the lodge logo on there. How cool is that? That's so, pretty cool. Yeah. You'll actually have the first cooler. I technically, at this moment, the only. Yeah. Wow. For right now. That'll change. Yeah, but right now. That'll change soon enough. But I also think, when we go ready to get into Dan, I think maybe we should give away a tumbler too. Really? Yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, why not? People use them. Oh, yeah. yeah, they do. <laughs> I mean, you know, and here's the thing. When we got into tumblers, I wasn't a fan because everybody was doing tumblers. Okay. And the only reason we got into tumblers was because the stores required them yep. mm-hmm. if they were going to replace another brand yep. because they sold uh-huh. so many tumblers. So we had to do the tumblers. Okay. But we also do sunglasses. So we're a little bit different. But anyways, people love the tumblers. Um, even your station manager, he's like, man, I need a new tumbler. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> so, well, you know, I think, you know, it's only fair if we're going to give you guys tumblers, we should probably give away a tumbler. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's our first episode. Yeah. So what we'll do is we're going to go to a break and then we'll bring Dan Robinson in. But, uh, when we go to this break, you want to have him call it? Maybe fifth caller. Does that sound good? Sure. Yeah. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. Matt? Fifth. All right. Yeah. So if you want to win an Icy Tech tumbler. I'm back to the lodge. Be the fifth caller at 1-866-708-3276. That number again is 1-866-708-3276. We're going to take a break, and then we'll have Dan Robinson in. You're listening to 100.9 The Farm. Get him. This moment was brought to you by Higdon Outdoors, a leader in the waterfowl industry for over 25 years. Check us out at HigdonOutdoors.com. Higdon Outdoors has been helping waterfowl hunters make the most of their time in the field for over 25 years. We are a family-owned company and we're proud to serve duck and goose hunters just like you. We make high-quality, innovative decoys and hunting products that you can afford, helping you focus on what's really important. Check us out at HigdonOutdoors.com. Innovation. Quality. Customer service. That's Higdon Outdoors. Get real. Get Higdon. Hey, y'all. This is Josh Miranda, and you're tuned in to 100.9 The Farm. IC Tech now has tumblers and apparel. Check out ICTech.com or visit the Hardware House in Huntingdon, Bennett's Hardware of McKenzie, or Rev Power Sports in Jackson to find all your IC Tech coolers and accessories. IC Tech, the classic roto molded cooler that started an entire industry. 100% veteran owned and operated. IC Tech USA. Welcome back to the Lodge. We're here with another guest today. Today we've Also got Dan Robinson. Dan Robinson is also a Gold Star father. His son, Heath Robinson, was KIA nine years ago this week in Extortion 1-7. Dan, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Pat, uh, it's always good to talk to you, and I'm glad to be part of your program. Uh, For for our listeners at home, uh, I've known Dan for uh, almost a year now. And, uh, you know, your son, I actually didn't have the pleasure of knowing your son, uh, but Heath, from everybody that is I've talked to, have had nothing but just radiant things to say about him. Uh, and, and we've talked one on one. You and I, uh, we we spent some time together last November um, with IC Tech up at uh, the Michael Strange Foundation to raise money for Gold Star families like yourself uh, with uh, Charlie's Healing Retreats. And we we just had Charlie on the show, so uh, wanted to you know share with folks. You know, obviously this week being the anniversary. Um, and yet, here's another father, uh, a gold star father who, in my eyes, has been completely resilient in taking such a tragic thing and, and turning it into something special to help other people. And, and we say this over and over again: you can't see the stars without darkness. But um, man, you you are you just absolutely blow my mind when it comes to resiliency. Um, and if you don't mind, Dan, if you could share with our listeners a little bit about what you do. Well, the, the, the real issue is, is that you, we have all these young men and women who, for their welfare of this country and selflessness as their way of life, 
that they go out and put themselves in harm's way each and every day. And when something happens like Extortion 17, where you have, at, at this point in this juncture in history, the largest loss of life of special forces ever, you get to know these people not as friends anymore, but they truly become family. It's like Charlie. You know, I, I travel all over the country doing speaking engagements, and I go to Philadelphia and talk to Charlie, and they have a whole different language down there. I mean, it's not Charlie, it's Charlie. Yeah. And so, you know, he's become a great friend. Um, the part of it is, is that after so long, you try to understand and cope with the loss, but what do you do with that? How, how do you take that and make it something so profound as the kids? I mean, how do you, how do you go out to the public and say, okay, we don't ever want to forget these people, any of them. But how do you do that? So what I've tried to do is travel around the country and speak engagements throughout the, the entire United States. And my idea now is, is progressed and has changed somewhat. Rather than just talk about my son and how it affected just me, now it's like, what do you do with your life? Because tomorrow you may not be here, or you may know someone that's not going to be here. And how do you do that? How do you fulfill a goal. How do you do something that was so profound as our kids did and love their job and love this country? Absolutely. Well, and Dan, with with what you're doing and what you talked about, you know, it, it, it the consistent theme, and we point out with the values of of everybody and our guests, whether whether it be a gold star father, a veteran, um, an outdoor personality, or or even a country music singer, you know, the values are the same. It's the same story repeated over and over. And and that's the, you know, resiliency is everything and hardships come, but what you do with them. And, and the thing that we, we tie into this is the outdoors aspect of it. You know, you and I have talked, what, what would you say is your favorite activity to do outdoors? Oh, I would say at this point, um, I was a little league coach for my kids for 20 years, both Pop Warner football and, and baseball. But I think the idea of living in northern Michigan, the beauty that we have up here is, is where my sons grew up, is that you have year-round activities. Uh, when the boys were young, we skied. Um, I had a hell of a time trying to keep up with them, so I, I would let them go. Yeah. But I think for the most part, even in the summertime, you appreciate the, the what we have. I mean, it, it's so hard to not be appreciative when you have something like this happen. Um, People who have witnessed death or a loss of a child in particular, you have to go out and your ideas and your attitudes change. What used to be important is not anymore. To wake up in the morning now, to have a cup of coffee and set out in the sunshine, for me, is truly a blessing. Uh, At night, I go out and look at the stars. A lot of times I'll sit in the hot tub and I'll look up at the stars knowing that one of those stars is my sun. So I think your appreciation of not just the materialistic things or the monetary things, I think it becomes more embedded in you that you want to just say, you know what, I am thankful for what we do. Golf, uh, you know, I like to go out and play golf. And when people say, what do you hit? I usually tell them, no, I hit a few trees, I hit some water. <laughs> but uh, I enjoy being out there. And for the most part, I think that's where my kids learn because – the jobs that they have done, and, and like with Heath, you're constantly outside. You're doing something. You're always learning. And I think the biggest part of the boys being in uh, all of them, you know, the extortion, they all lived on something that you know all too well. You live on adrenaline and adventure. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I think you learn from a young child of going outside, you know, as early as riding a bike. You know, there's something about that. So Absolutely. I think the outdoors for us has fulfilled a big part of our life. You know, and, it, and it's funny, too. And last night, even when we talked, you were sitting on the on the back porch listening to the frogs <laughs> in the woods. And, you know, when you talk about growing up, you know, I, I remember on my 16th birthday, uh, you know, my, my mother made my father drive me down to uh, Canton Air Sports in Ohio when I jumped out of a plane for the first time on my 16th birthday, and she basically looked at my father and said, you're coming back with my son or don't come back at all. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> it's something with, you know that starts at a youth, but there's there, I don't really say there's ever an age where it doesn't apply. I mean, nature has this very healing aspect of putting the world in perspective, um, but even more so learning to be independent 
Um, and nature has that healing property that I think you found and, and everyone else has found. Um, but it also builds a different type of character. It builds an appreciation for the world as a whole. And yeah. and I think you, that's one of the reasons why you're you're finding that peace and serenity at night. And you know Tom Tom O'Neill is out. He's an avid fisherman. You know Tom, and sure. uh, you know he he goes out fishing all the time. We're actually supposed to go fishing with him here soon, and we're looking forward to that. But um, you know golf. You know, that's another example. Charlie brought up earlier in the show. You know, getting outdoors. You know, he lives in Philadelphia, or Philly, as he likes to say. And as you said, yeah. chow, chow, I can't even say it <laughs> right. Charlie. <Charlie. laughs> you know, but even being in the inner city, our listeners can understand you don't have to be out in the country. You can get outdoors in the city and still appreciate a lot of the things that we over we overlook. And I know, I mean, Matt, the other day we were in uh, Indianapolis in the middle of winter. I mean, it was freezing cold, and we we were still able to find. Art and 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 uh, statues and stuff. Statues. <laughs> we won't say what we did to the statue, but you know we, we found some things, <laughs> you know, to to, to relieve you know that that stress of everyday travel and what we do. Um, but you can find it in the cities. There's small parks. There's there's little neat things to find. But you know, golf is a, another great example. You're out on the greens. You're in you're in some wooded areas. There's water. Yeah. Water is very healing, um, and there's a lot of therapy to be found there. Now, speaking of golf. You've got a golf outing coming up, correct? We do. Um, every year on August 6th, I used to go to one of the local restaurants that had a, a lounge or a bar, and I would take a shot glass that I got from the teams when Heath was killed, and I would take a small American flag, and I would do a shot of Jack Daniels, which the way that came about is when the guys would go on a mission, they would hold up the American flag, take a picture of it, take a shot of Jack Daniels, get on the helicopters and go. So I tried to, if nothing else, as minor as it is, just to remember not only Heath, but all of them. And one of the young men that was sitting at the bar one night up at the New York restaurant in Harbor Springs, the bartender at the time, his name was Joe, and he has since died, but he was Navy. So we'd sit there and shoot the breeze. And this young man says to me, are you military? And I said, no, I'm not. And he wasn't rude he was just persistent he said well i'm a marine and i was just curious so i told him the story about extortion how all the guys were killed and by the end of the night his wife laura said to him well you're no good to me tonight because you're obviously drinking with this guy so laura went home joe and i sat there and we got pretty hammered just talking about military and what it meant to him and what the gold star process means to me and then shortly after that, we started a, a 501c3, which is called Team Honor. And Team Honor is uh, the board members. Uh, a lot of them are military. Uh, most of us are in there for the reasons that we want to help veterans coming home, short-term, minor things. So $1,500 or less for car payments, house payments, whatever it may be, because sometimes these guys are so humble, they won't ask for help. And... Once we can get them through that hump, maybe it will it would cause them to not do anything that would cause real grief to the family. No, you... Well, that's how Team Honor started. Through all the course of this, we have a bike ride that is up in northern Michigan, and you ride from Harbor Springs, Michigan, to Mackinac City, where the Metro Bridge is. Well, because of the COVID this year, and it's a fifth ride. So oh, I, I think we're I think we're losing you a little bit, Dan. You there? Let's do a golf tournament once because it's in northern Michigan and September is going to be September 19th. It's one of the most beautiful picturesque spots in the country is northern Michigan. So we're going to have a golf outing on September 19th and um, we're calling it uh, Holes for Heroes. We hope to have, you know, 12, 13 teams. We've got a lot of them filled already. But, you know, like with you, we have sponsors for those and then the heroes for hole or holes for heroes in every hole we're going to have a young man that was killed in the war and a lot of them because of my affiliation with the seals most of them will be seals so that's kind of what we're doing and it's it's just to raise money so when these guys come to us or we find out who they may be that we can go out and assist them in their daily lives just just to get them through that hump 
So that that's what the golf outing is all about. Awesome. Well, and like you and I discussed the other night, Ice Tech is more than proud to be a sponsor of that golf tournament. But for our listeners at home, Holes for Heroes, uh, there's several golf tournaments called that. So how can they reach you? Where, where, how can they find you to donate or sponsor? Well, to, to get all of me personally, and, and I'm actually on the board, uh, one of the officers of uh, Team Honor, um, they can actually go uh, to our website, which is uh, teamhonor.org, uh, or they can get a hold of me at uh, my email address, and I'll give that out. It's DMR, as in uh, David Matthew Robert, 6810 at gmail.com. Excellent. And, you know, if if we want, we can put a phone number up. I don't because then we get 9,000 robocalls. Well, and I'll tell you, but, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, we'll get the teamhonor.org website, your email address, and, uh, we'll put that contact information on our website and our Facebook page. We'll put a post on the Facebook page, um, at Back to the would, Lodge on Facebook. Awesome. And that way they can find all your contact information and get it over to you. So, Dan, I gotta ask well, and, you. And like you said, this is the anniversary. This, it, it's hard to believe it's been nine years. Oh my gosh, yes, um, uh, it, it's yeah, surreal because of the fact that you know the Gold Star families, which a lot of people don't, they're not aware of, and there's a history behind it. And I don't want to go into it, but it actually started in World War One with a mother who wanted to honor her children, and she put in the window of the long, the long rectangular red piece of cloth with a long white piece of cloth inside there. And the blue stars represented those who were in the military. So mm-hmm. there's a blue star family, which represents anyone Active who duty. is serving. Mm-hmm. And then the gold star part of it is anyone who has lost someone in the war. So I am a blue star father, and I'm also a gold star father. But when you realize what that means, it's something that we all are very proud of for what our sons and daughters have done, but it's something none of us want to be in. And, you know, once you are part of this, it's a family. But the thing that we forget, and I have to let everybody know this no matter where I go, right at this very moment, there's people in this military of ours, men and women around the world, fighting for our freedoms. And we can't ever forget that because they're out there doing things that most of us don't know or don't want to do, and the sacrifices that they make are incredible. The selflessness that they have to stay away from their families on Christmas and all the holidays and this birthday. It's just amazing. So that's one thing that we really try to do as groups, no matter where we go, is to always remember and never forget. Absolutely. And and as you mentioned, you're also a Blue Star father. You have two other boys that served. And also, too, it's your father's birthday today. Is that correct? Yeah, Dad's uh, 93 today. He was the last class to go to Great Lakes Naval uh, Station during World War II, and I've had a chance to take Dad down there. He spoke to a group of guys. There were 194 of them, and they were pre-buds, so they work up down there then before they go out to the West Coast. But oh, uh, Dad was in, uh, he was on his way to Japan. They were going to bomb bomb Japan, and he was in a ship, and the war ended, so he ended up in Guam. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, Dad was Navy. My uncle was a master chief. Um, my previous father-in-law was in the Navy. Uh, my brother was a Marine. Uh, my, my nephew's in the Coast Guard, about ready to deploy to Cuba. And then my three sons are in the military, all Navy. My goodness. So, who ya, I guess I should say. There you go. <laughs> we can finally outnumber Matt on this show. So, let me ask you something, Dan, before we let you go. And, and we ask this of every one of our guests. If you were to give our audience, some parting advice, what would those words be? Well, I think through the, the course of this, as a father growing up with children, chronologically, it, it's not acceptable in our society to lose a child. Uh, rather it be military in the war or just anything. But it's to not take anything for granted. A uh, real quick story is that Heath and I one time were at Home Depot, and after his friend... Adam Brown was killed. Uh, we went to Home Depot, and this young man pulled in with a BMW, and he hit a pothole, and he got out, and he was just complaining. And he looked at me, and he said, you know, Dad, I just came from a place where there's no roads, there's no pothole, there's no water, there's no electricity. He said, the people in this country 
take so for granted what we have that they don't realize what this country means. And I, I guess I would say that is, you know, friendships and people, and there's nothing that's that bad that we can't sit and talk to one another or don't just take for granted that tomorrow's going to be here because I'm not trying to be a doomsday, but we just don't know. So I, I, I accept every day. I appreciate it. I'm blessed to be part of not only this life, but this country. And I'm so proud and pleased to be able to know those who serve this country. Uh, and I say that to you too, Pat. I mean, I thank you for what you guys have all done. So, Well, true spoken words from a gold star father. Sir, you are a true national hero. I'm proud to call you a friend. We absolutely love you. Um, and we're very grateful to have you on. Well, Pat, I appreciate being here, and, you know, you and I met last year, and there's a lot of things that still need to be done. I've got other programs, uh, other uh, 501s or nonprofits that we look at that want to help, too, and, you know, when we get together again personally, I would love to go on. I think you drink beer, don't you? <laughs> Very rare occasion. I think Matt's seen me. Matt, Matt's probably one of the only few people have seen me drink since the military. Hey, Dan, Dan don't worry about it. I'll drink beer with you. Uh, well, well anyway, I mean, just, um, I, I get I get tunnel control. vision. So that if you remember back when we were in Philadelphia, uh, you know, Jameson was the drink of choice uh, for the for that benefit. Um, I don't. Yeah, Rob wasn't in that day yet. So it was myself, uh, my fiance, and uh, Mike Anderson actually. Um, and hopefully we'll have him on an episode here soon. Mike Anderson, also a gold star father, and and I don't know how much Jameson we had, uh, but but I know I do know the bar closed at the hotel, and we somehow meandered to that Italian restaurant um, a couple God. blocks away, yeah, I, and a gentleman had I, a heart attack. I kind of remember that. Oh my goodness! And, and and here I am. I'm I'm honestly humbly three sheets in the wind. The guy has a heart attack, drops dead. Nobody knows what to do. And I'm, I, I put my drink down. I looked at Mike and I said, D- now I have to work. So I went over, <laughs> resuscitated the guy. And, and, you know, these people were so grateful. I just wanted the, the atmosphere to get back to normal. I mean, that, that's how tunnel visioned I was. And, yeah. and I sat back down with, with Rachel and Mike and we proceeded to have finish our drinks. Well, the owner of the restaurant establishment said, well, that guy you saved, he was a somebody. And, and I looked at him like, I don't care. I just want my Jameson. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, that was the running joke the rest of the weekend was, you know, Patrick didn't even care that this guy dropped dead. Um, he, he, was, he was focused on drinking. Um, and, and, and the look that I got from my fiance that night was probably priceless if I could box that up. She, she just couldn't believe that I could care less. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> you know Pat, so, Pat, this is the whole thing that I say about this. That's where, as a society, we need to come in. It's not about accolades. It's not about the gratitude. It's about doing stuff for other people, and that's where our military comes in. You could have just as easily sat there and watched. Oh yeah, but that's not who, that's not who our young men and women are. But but worse it's yet, we don't we don't want the recognition for it. it it's like yeah, but, you know, let's just get yeah. this fixed. You know, fix and move on. That's that's our adaptation attitude. Yeah. Um, you know, look, I look at it as the guy, you know, just like an accident when you're driving down the road, my, my fiance still gets irritated with me cause I'll do something, you know, I'll stop and help, um, uh, because I can, you know, being trained yeah. in paramedicine and emergency response. But again, you know, that's when I start drinking, I feel like, you know, it, <laughs> it's tunnel vision. I don't know. That's just me. I don't, I don't like to well, be but, that you way. Know, but, you said something that's so true. Kath and I will be right driving down the road and I'll see somebody stop and I'll pull over and she said, why do you do this? And I said, because first of all, I, if they need help, I want to be able to assist them. And secondly, if that was you on the side of the road, I would hope somebody would stop. Exactly. Them. Make sure you tell Rachel that next time you see her because she's still mad at me for extricating somebody from their vehicle last month. So anyways, Dan, absolute pleasure to have you. I look forward oh, to God, having you again and anything we can do to help. Like I said, you've got IC Tech as a sponsor for the golf tournament. Folks, if you want to find Dan, check out our Facebook page. We're going to have his information on there. Dan, again, true honor. Uh, we'll be back here after a message from our sponsor, Back to the Lodge. Okay. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. This country was born to believe in something larger than itself, a belief that the citizens within it could accomplish anything. From defeating an empire to sending a man to the moon, we built cities, formed the land, and through this an original spirit was born that has forged friendships, been celebrated, and at times been the cause of debate. 
We might not always agree, but there is one thing we can all agree on. Love of country and love of a fine bourbon. America Bourbon. Vet owned and made proudly in the USA. Available nationwide at most leading retailers and at AmericaBourbon.com. 841, you're listening to 100.9 The Farm, back to the lodge, in studio, myself, Matt Dretzka, and Nick Condor. Absolutely. So, man, Dan Robinson, mm-hmm. I mean, another one. I another mean, this one. is, this yep. is, we're kind of setting the bar a little high here, but um, man, just a resilient guy. Absolutely. So, during the break, um, we did forget to mention, we had John from Orlando, Florida, who won our Tumblr? We reached Orlando, Florida. That was pretty cool. Nice. First episode. Yeah, that's, I know. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's cool. And, and none of us knew him too. That was even better. Yeah. <laughs> so I was kind of afraid, like if it'd be somebody we know. But I guess that's okay. I mean, it, it's Colin, so it's yeah. it's random. So if you're local or in Florida, it doesn't matter. You could be in here in Huntington, Tennessee, listening to 100.9 on your radio, or you could be listening to us at backtolodge.com on your uh, phone or web browser i guess so yeah, yeah that's that's pretty cool mm-hmm. so yeah that was that was humbling um so yeah what so we got dan and and dan just man i'm always kind of speechless after listening to these guys but you know we have um we have the cooler giveaway you know what and, be- before we go a whole lot further this is our first episode right you know let's go big let's give what? out another tumbler what? <laughs> you should have like ran that by me first. <laughs> I, thought, I thought this was my job. I thought that's what I was supposed to do. Mm. It's just give oh, free stuff away. Is that not it? <laughs> I guess you got the sales management thing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was giveaway specialist. That's not. Uh, I mean, I'll look at my business card later. Why don't you go ahead and throw an advisor too while you're at it? <laughs> and I guess I could. Are you kidding? Are you serious? <laughs> I mean, you know what? First episode. <laughs> You can't, I mean, you can't even buy those. No. We only had a few left, so we discontinued them. But yeah, the golf visors. I mean, it, it is the pilot episode. All right. It you, is the pilot. I Come guess on, Daddy. What are you going to do? Go All right, we'll go do home. It. So, we, we'll give away, so you're saying we're going to give away another tumbler. Yeah. yeah. And then this one also gets a visor. Yeah. Why not? All right. Why not? Yeah. So, fifth caller again? Yeah, let's do five. Yeah, man. let's do it. All right. So, fifth caller at 1 866. 708-3276. Again, that's 866-708-3276. We'll give away a tumbler and a visor, thanks to Matthew. You're welcome. <laughs> and we'll be back after this break. You're listening to 100.9 The Farm. Get out. This moment was brought to you by Higdon Outdoors, a leader in the waterfowl industry for over 25 years. Check us out at HigdonOutdoors.com. Higdon Outdoors has been helping waterfowl hunters make the most of their time in the field for over 25 years. We are a family-owned company, and we're proud to serve duck and goose hunters just like you. We make high-quality, innovative decoys and hunting products that you can afford, helping you focus on what's really important. Check us out at HigdonOutdoors.com. Innovation. Quality. Customer service. That's Higdon Outdoors. Get real. Get Higdon. When you purchase an Icy Tech cooler, not only are you getting the best and original Rotomold cooler for your barbecue, your kid's graduation party, or maybe even the boat, but your proceeds from that purchase go on to help Gold Star families receive grief counseling retreats so they can heal and get a little piece of their heart back. So they can have the same quality of life that we share. Icy Tick, USA. A48, we're back to the lodge on 100.9 The Farm. So we had another winner on the tumbler and the visor. That was quick. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and it was. well, this time it was local. So yeah. that was kind of cool. So yeah. we got far reach. We got local reach. So Daniel from Huntington, Tennessee, here yeah. locally, was our fifth caller. And Daniel won the tumbler and the uh, visor. Thanks, Matt, for throwing in an extra tumbler. <laughs> You're welcome, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll just we'll give more stuff away. But speaking of giveaways, so now I guess now is the critical moment, right? Yeah. So we went through, and we had to we pulled the names of everybody that 
you know, follow the instructions. So they shared the post, mm-hmm. liked the post, and liked the page. Back to the lodge on Facebook. And out of those names. And, and we didn't even shut the time down until, what, five minutes ago we shut it down? Yeah, about I mean, five or yeah. six. So we still had some people coming in there at the end there. Yeah, so if they were still sharing it during the yep. show, they were entered. Um, so we went ahead. We did the ran- the random, what is it called? Random number, number generator. G- generator. Yep. Thank mm-hmm. you. I'm, I'm not a techie guy. Well, I'm supposed to be. But So anyways, <laughs> if you're listening, the winner of the Icy Tech 25-quart cooler for a premiere episode. Drum roll. Is Jeff Hebert. So, Jeff, your Facebook doesn't say where you're from, but if you reach out to us, or we're going to reach out to you, you won the Icy Tech 25 Court Cooler just for liking and sharing our post and page. So, Jeff, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing our stuff. What a great episode. So, we're we're about to wrap up here. And, um, you know, I think some of the takeaways that we want to definitely touch on is, you know, people make choices. Mm. And you make a choice every day. You make a choice every time you eat. You make a choice every time something happens to you, how you want to perceive that and how you want to move forward. And I think, you know, some of the healing that comes with a lot of folks and veterans, especially is understanding their emotional intelligence. And it sounds like some voodoo stuff, but emotional intelligence is actually really simple. If you've read some of the books on it, it's understanding your self perception and then aligning that with your self expression. Now it sounds like some bigger words, but really all it means is knowing who you are, what, who you really are and then expressing yourself. For exactly who you are, not trying to be somebody you're not. Right. And when you align those two, you know your decision making, your stress management, and interpersonal relationships flow a lot easier. And you know you can definitely tell a lot of the folks that we have on the show have absolutely figured that out. Yeah. I think yeah. I think my quick takeaway, and I sort of we all sort of touched on this earlier in the show, is sort of a one word thing. It's just perseverance. Yep. You know, all three of the gentlemen that we had on tonight you know, sort of embody that word. Um, and I mean, perseverance, that, that, that's the word, that's the takeaway I had today. It's, it's when you think things are tough, there is always that light at the end of the tunnel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And these men have all found that end and then strove past that to do incredible things. And in, in, in some six, in, you know, most of these situations sort of giving the other, these other people light at the end of their tunnel. Mm-hmm. So it's just the perseverance. That's, that's yeah. sort of my quick, my quick takeaway from from this. So now let's let's paint that picture. So if I was to ask you, now all three of us outdoorsmen, when you've been through tough times and dark times, especially after the service or after contracting or life in general, like let's get away from the service for a second because we were talking about this earlier. It's not just veterans that struggle, and that's a, that's a misconception a lot of people get is that well you can't have post traumatic stress or survivor's remorse unless you're a veteran. That's not true. I mean, I think it's common sense enough at this point. You know, as a, as a country, as a globe. We understand that's not true. Any, any traumatic event or emotional response to something is how your body's dealing with it. So let, let's get that off the table because we want to make sure that's clear. But for you, Matt, when you were going through those tough times and you got outdoors, whether it was fishing, hunting, camping, whatever it may be, what was the aspect of it that helped you that you'll never forget? Like you said, r- regardless if it was hunting or fishing, which are two very big things to me, or for whether it was just taking a walk through the woods or whatever, it's it's sort of that opportunity that you have to reset, sort of take what whatever it is, you know, whether it's some type of military struggle or whether it's some type of life struggle, getting that opportunity to get out there and see the bigger picture, which can't be painted whether you're watching TV or whether it's on social media, you really... When you get to disconnect from all of it is what has always, for me, reset it for me. And truthfully, it's it's one of the biggest conversations that me and Patrick first had before we were even friends. It was a conversation that me and him had. And it's one of the things that brought us together was the conversation about the outdoors and how it's given us, on top of therapy and on top of, it's, it's given us something that has always cleared our mind. Mm-hmm. Um and that's, I guess, my big goal with this entire thing is, and it's not just the military awareness, and, the, and it's it's everybody, is that it doesn't matter if it's bike riding, rock climbing, yep. I, uh, basket weaving, I don't care what it is. There is a way to reset and, and sort of put things back into, into picture and then persevere through it. So to me, that's what it is. Well, I like how you pointed out, you know, the 
the silence of it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's noise. Whether you're in a city park or in the woods, there's noise. There's noises to be heard. But there's also a, a blessing of silence. Or, yeah, the blessing of silence. And that's that you're not hearing the noise and the, the white noise distraction of life, whether it's the phone notifications or people talking. And, and you know, humans disagree. It's, na it's human nature to disagree and have different beliefs. But to be able to just turn off all those other noises, then you can actually hear yourself. And I think that's the solitude. For me, you know, I used to say I love to go hunting, but really all I was doing was sitting in a tree stand. <laughs> right. <laughs> Especially right. some of the places I used to hunt. But it's that solitude of sitting there and hearing yourself. I mean, I don't know how many times you, you say the craziest things to yourself. Like, you know, you sometimes pray to God. <laughs> you know, even if you weren't religious, you were you were becoming religious. Right. And, you know, you're you're listening to yourself and who you are and reflecting. And that reflection is coming from the nature around you. And as crazy as that sounds, that silence is a, is a different white noise than what we run around to every day. Whether it's, you know, computers, cars, radios, cell phones, all the, all the distractions that we have now. I mean, we were talking about, you guys make fun of me for, for being old. But I mean, when I was, when I first started in radio, which was back in the 90s, late 90s, we didn't, I, we had cell phones, but they weren't, you know, big bricks. They weren't <laughs> smartphones like we have today. I didn't have my first email address till I think it was 1999 or 2000. And it was through, it was through college. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we didn't have internet like it is today. We didn't, we didn't know news feeds and Facebook and, you know, that you knew yourself. So when you got up in the morning, the only interaction you had was with whatever family you lived with before breakfast. And then you got on a school bus or walked to school and then you had to be quiet in class. So then when you got in the hallways, that's when you interacted with people. Nowadays, kids wake up in the morning and they've, they've learned, you know, the experiences of 200 of their friends last night. In what they did, what they Absolutely. had for dinner, where they went to, you know, to watch a movie or a vacation and, you know, I'm cooking this or that. And I'm guilty of that, too. I like to post pictures of food. I like to cook. You like to cook. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the, especially children nowadays, it's it's so critical. In, and this is my opinion, is that it's so critical now for parents and grandparents to reach down and get your kids outdoors. Because, you know, back in the day, you know, if your folks told you dinner's at five o'clock. You had to be home at five o'clock. There was no way to text and say, right. I'll be late. Mm -hmm. Come out for it. Yep. You know, and if, if mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or whoever raised you, you know, was at work, it's not like you could just pick up a phone and call them at their work necessarily. Right. Right. So you had to call that house phone. I mean, we, we've, we've gotten so accustomed to the ease of communication, yet we don't use it for ourselves. We use it to appease others. And, you know, taking that time to hear that different white noise in the outdoors. Um, like you said, it helps you reset. So I think you definitely hit the nail on the head. Um, you know what my favorite thing is about our little spot out there on Natchez Trace Fishing? You know what my favorite thing is? Other than the fish beds? Other than we just know how to hammer <laughs> them bluegill and shell crackers or brim yeah. if you're down here in the middle of... No, there's there's no fish beds on that lake. But uh, my, my absolute <laughs> favorite thing about it is you're not getting a phone call out there. No, there is yeah. no cell service, which has or has not gotten us in trouble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but there's no cell service out there, yeah. and that's you're forced to disconnect at that point. Yep, and and that's yeah. great. That I mean, it's great. It's it's the blessing in disguise, and so. it's also some pretty decent vision. No, it's not. Don't tell people that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, that's gonna wrap up our first episode of Back to the Lodge here on 100.9 The Farm. Until next week. Ask yourself, what are you grateful for? Live from 100.9 The Farm here in West Tennessee, I'm Patrick. I'm Matt. I'm Nick. And we'll see you next week when we head back to the lodge.